God is not a cosmic killjoy that, <laughs> that like you have desires for a reason and he wants you to enjoy his creation like and yep. all the things that come with that. But in the right boundary, I always say like like this is like or anything that God has given us a desire is like a fire pit or like a bonfire in the woods. Like it can provide heat for everybody, can cook things, purify water, do all these good things. But as soon as it falls out of that boundary, mm -hmm. it can cause a forest fire, can kill, cause havoc. That's when a I talk great about for example, yeah. uh, when like in this generation, STDs on planned pregnancies, mm. creating instability in relationships. Mm. So like God is not placing these boundaries so that you don't have fun. He's placing them because he loves you. And once you like are aware of that, it like frees you. And you start to honestly appreciate God more because you realize that he's really, he wants you to experience those desires in a good way. And he's trying to protect you by placing these limitations that you think they're limitations. But yeah. really not. That was beautiful. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah, that's What's up, guys? Welcome back. Oh, man. This episode is, like, not for everyone. It's going to be the, the spiritual. I can't say that. That's a terrible Yeah, what? Thing. Yeah, yeah. Start no. again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Run it back. Run it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you just got to gotta tell them that we're going to talk about, like, um, drugs, money, and just so that they get them sucked in. And then, then we end up witnessing to all of them. You know, we'll start there. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Uh, listen, I'm here with Alex Ebank. 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 I took a deep dive into your content, bro, and I'm... I'm so excited because I feel like iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. And I feel like you and I have this very big view on spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you kind of coast through life in obedience to the, what the Bible you know, kind of instructs. Yeah. And uh, I have my own little journey, but it's cool to see two people that have two different, like we've never met each other. We never had anything to do with each other. But we could sit down and have a like-minded conversation because you see something from the same point of view. Correct. Yeah. And I feel like this podcast is something... I, I haven't been this excited about a podcast in a very long time. Like, yeah. in a very long time because I'm just kind of like... This is like when you go to like... I don't know, like if you're into cars and like they're about to bring out like the coolest mm -hmm. cars and you know, you're you about to talk about cars and this is something I'm super passionate about, so... Yeah, this I is, could, bro, I could talk up a storm. Like, I'll talk to this, like, people, anyone who comes over to my house who's, like, who I know. I get excited when I know they're not that religious because I always want to wait end up talking about it, and then I'll just go on for, like, <laughs> like I, I always can talk Because you're it. passionate. And yeah. what people don't understand is it's not, like, it's not, like, how it is when it is about, like, jewelry or cars. That's more, like, make me feel good. This is like, I'm trying to make you feel good because uh, I already too. feel amazing and I'm trying to share, share that wealth with you. Yep. But I want, let's take a dive into your life and then we could kind of take these little sideway roads mm -hmm. to like what built up the man that you are today. Cool. So uh, before you got into this fitness, was it fitness that kind of helped you get into this journey or was it like... Um, so me and my dad are very close. My dad's like everything I want to be. So we, so I always grew up in like a Christian house household, but I never like understood what like an intimate relationship with christ was yeah and so um i went through like a lot of like spiritual <coughs> mental battles um when i was like 18 and 19 i like really was going through it i was having like the worst derealization um depression and it like really made me feel like done with life <clears throat> and i went down that like that rabbit hole of like trying to like find what could help save me um yeah. and i was taking i was taking like anxiety meds back then and it like was all making it worse and then I started listening to worship Band -Aid music. On a bullet wound. Yeah. yeah, started listening to, like worship <laughs> music on my way to school. Um, I played guitar a bit and I like would sing a little bit. So I would like just go in my dad's um, bathroom when he wasn't home and I'll play worship music. <clears throat> and I started like feeling a like sort of it was like the Holy Spirit. I started feeling like a presence of something. You know what I mean? So I started like diving deep into it. I'm a very logical person, so I needed like to have um like proof. Or like faith mm. you know what i mean like I always like called myself a christian but i didn't like really believe it and if anybody like was to dissect my faith i probably would you know fail it was very weak it was on like a weak foundation you know if i had like a um non-believer come up to me and start asking me questions i probably would fall apart and be like mm -hmm. you know what i mean so like i went on a journey to try and like find out if it was true or not through looking into like jesus of nazareth as a historical figure um Cause I like had like, like the reason why I started doing that again, I kind of skipped over that, but I was like, I was like done with life. I was like suicidal. I was like, I couldn't leave my house. I lost like weight. Cause I, every time I ate food, I would convince myself that I was going to throw up and I developed a fear of getting sick. And mm -hmm. it was like a, it was like a ripple effect. I would be like in my house and out of nowhere, I would just like think that life wasn't real. I'd have like an out of body experience and I would yeah. tweak out. I like literally could not leave my house. I would pull, pull over on the side of the road and I'd have to like dry heave it was like literally i could not do anything and i like i i have these voice memos i did like a life story video 
Um, I, I watched these, this video. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. yeah. I, like I really enjoyed it. Where you, I was saying you were very opening about that, mm -hmm. like, and that's yeah. uh, it was really raw. It was probably the most yeah. raw thing I've ever seen when it comes. It's to a great it. story, a great <clears throat> the way you told it. It was like you could really picture all the moments, and it was like short, sweet, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I I like that, like, because I know that being vulnerable is so important. Because everybody just, <clears throat> especially as like men, like they teach you to kind of keep everything down and mm -hmm. not really let it out. So seeing just like the response and comments on like that life story thing, like I could see how many kids were relating to and also going through like depression and having, you know, derealization, anxiety and um, all of them like asking like, yo, how'd you fix it? Cause I literally was like immobile. Like I could not, I was in like, I got, I got so bad. Like I think it was in 2019. Like I literally was like so done with it. That's why I would make the voice memos. Cause I was like saying I did not want to live like that anymore. Cause it just like was the, it was just a shitty way to live. It was like 24 seven having panic attacks i couldn't go out and get you know go to a restaurant with my dad or anything because i'd get a panic attack i had to go to an amb get an ambulance one time i convinced myself i was gonna die um mm -hmm. and i get like called an ambulance like it was bad so fast forward the uh, back to like the worship music thing um i love like maverick city music um elevation worship and then started listening to stephen furtick um you love steven? yeah i met him recently i had to work out with him great guy i know we, he gets a lot we of met like, him in arizona awesome dude yeah, i'm a big fan i uh I like listening to uh, preachers, but sometimes uh, pe preachers at that platform, you have to be careful. 100%. You get what I'm saying? Because a yeah. lot of preachers want to like kind of get everybody, which I understand is because he's trying his best in, in the form that he's in. Um, and I'm not just talking about Stephen. I'm talking about anybody. Um, but there's certain mega churches I refuse to listen to. I agree. Me too. You have to be careful where you get your um, your spiritual weapons from and i actually yeah. wanted to bring this up jess could you grab me these two bibles i thought this was going to be like towards the ending and this is like straight up from the beginning which i love oh this yes very big dude um so when i do bible study uh, the one thing that i learned is kind of like when jesus says you have to look at it like a, a hidden treasure you know what i mean like you really have to dissect it and that's why it's called bible studies you're like you're really just studying it um i had this bible right over here and I was very like obsessed with the way it looks, the way it feels, uh, but it was e like easy to read. Super you know, easy the way to that read. they wrote it was nice to read. But where's the information coming from? That's the part that I wanted to kind of share with you. So check this out. This is actually pretty incredible. Do you know what Bible you have? Um, I have a I got a new study Bible that I recently got. It was, it's an NIV though translation. Uh, what what is it? Uh, new international version. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, that's what I mean. So I, well, I wanted to bring this up and this is, you can make your own decision for it, but, uh, this is a Bible that I was really liking. And then I just want to show everybody this one. This is an ancient Aramaic Bible oh, reading out of the original. Yeah. So I like to do that sometimes. So this is my Assyrian Bible. My parents raised me as an Assyrian boy. Cause I am an Assyrian boy. And they would always <laughs> tell me like, Hey, like, don't like, don't go away from this Bible. This Bible is very true. Like it, it has the actual documentary, like truth of it like you know it has the substance that you need it doesn't take anything out of it and i never understood this and then i'm reading matthew 17 in this in this bible man and this is the craziest thing in this bible verse in matthew 17 he's he's talking to 17 14 i'll just start from there uh peter is trying to cast out a demon mm -hmm. and he can't and the mom is like kind of confused she's like i brought him to your disciples he's not working uh, and then Jesus comes and he goes, look at your little faith that you have, casts out the demon. Then he says, if you have uh, faith as a mustard seed, you could tell this mountain in front of you to go from here to there, right? You can move it. Now read right here, 22. 22. Which one? Oh, now while they were gathering in the... In nope, the that's 23. That's What's 20, 22. What does 22 say? That's what 22 says. Now while they were gathering in the Galilee... Yes, 22 <laughs> is blank. I'm sorry, 21 is blank. Oh, yeah. And no it 21. goes to 22. So I'm sitting there, I'm looking at this, bro, and I'm like, wait, why is 22 blank? Like, blank. Yeah. It's not there. So I go to this other Bible, and 22 is there. And it says this, Nevertheless, this kind does not come out except by fasting and prayer. Interesting. So basically, he said, none of this stuff that I just told you matters mm. unless you pray and you fast. Wow. And I sat there and I'm like, for two things hit me immediately. It's like, whoa, how powerful is praying and fasting mm -hmm. that they're going to take the Bible like it's their own, take it remove out. very important things out of it so it could 
dis, like it could discourage you or push you in the wrong area. Because imagine if you didn't read that and you've been praying nonstop about mm -hmm. a certain subject yeah. over and over and over and over. And you're like, yo, why isn't my God showing up to this situation? Mm -hmm. But it's made very clear in this scripture. It says, nevertheless, this can't happen for some situations unless you pray and you fast. Wow. You're fighting like a battle with the wrong tools. That's kind of crazy. It, not gonna lie, because I was really excited to show you that because, like, for one week, bro, I took a walk around my neighborhood, and I'm like, I've been reading that Bible for like a year and a half now. Like, what else have I been has like? Been missed out from it, dude. Yeah, because I know, I know, like, a, a plenty of like, like when I, I'll, I'll have, I used to have like debates with like, um, like uh, atheists and Muslims in my Discord, and they would try to talk about how like the Bible has been like manipulated yeah and stuff and i try to like defend it the best that i can but that's that's actually really cool i was just talking to my pastor recently asking if like i should be fasting because like i never like i always kind of felt like maybe i should try because like you're kind of like denying the flesh and jesus did it so I should, like we should as well but i never saw like direct you know in the bible telling you to i literally was like thinking about that recently so that's actually really you know yeah there was a situation i was literally uh, talking to god about it because i've been praying about it and and just non-stop trying to be obedient to the word so I could figure out. I think of life as a video game. Mm -hmm. And when I get to this certain level, I think there's a certain devil, right? This is the little thing that I've been telling myself since I get new level, new devil. So it's like, okay, I'm trying to understand how to, from wisdom, attack this situation. Is it you know, the love? Is it dusting my feet and leaving? Is it uh, uh, rebuking? What, like, what's the situation? So there was one thing that I could not get past. And I'm like, this is the first time this has ever like really truly happened to me. So I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to do everything that I can. And finally I was like, God, you need to open my eyes and like help me figure this out. And I'm reading that Bible right there. And lo and behold, bro, I'm on like TikTok. And by the way, not for nothing, I'm never on TikTok, bro. Like never on TikTok. Jessica had my phone for a week. That You actually had yeah. to reach out to Jessica because for one week I didn't even have my phone on me. Wow. I disconnect myself from like the world sometimes. And randomly I get on and this guy just goes, be careful what Bible you're reading. Look at this Bible verse. It's not in there. And I'm like, what? And so like, I went to my Bible verse and I didn't see it there. So I was like, oh my God, how important is this? So I fasted and what I was dealing with was solved. That's crazy. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to share that with you because I was watching through your, um, your testimony mm -hmm. and I feel like your whole battle with life is faith. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I either believe in it too much like for example yeah. your overwhelmingness right like mm -hmm. when you would say oh i i can't eat so if i eat i'm gonna throw up mm -hmm. so this is pretty cool i wanted to share my point of view i wanted to see what you think of this you know how god is a is a god of order right yeah so if he makes this table right here I, this is a table now it's not going to be anything else it's not going to be a cow mm -hmm. right it's a table so if he tells us these are the actions that will prosper in this type of way and when he talks about faith, ironically, people think that he's talking about having faith in him. Mm -hmm. But I think you're so strong and we're made in his image that whatever you truly believe in and have your eyes on, you will go to. So when you were like giving yourself these panic attacks and you couldn't yeah. breathe is because you believed it and you were giving it to yourself. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If no. that makes any sense. No, I understand that. I agree. So I just wanted to share that with you because that was like also on my heart. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the panic attacks was, like, I hated because I couldn't explain it to anybody else when I was going through it. Because, like, like even my dad or, like, you know, somebody close to me, I, they would just, they wouldn't understand it because they didn't experience it themselves. People who have, like, bad derealization stuff, you can't explain it to somebody else unless they also have had it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I started, like, worship music, all that stuff, and then got into it. Started watching uh, Billy Graham. You listen to him ever? Billy Graham. I don't know Billy Graham. He used to, he was like the president's like pastor for a minute, like old school guy. He would fill out stadiums. Very oh wait, the older man mm -hmm. in black and white. Yep. Oh, I love his stuff. The best. Yo. Oh, you have I, I've seen him watch. I watch his that. stuff, and you know what's so crazy? You brought him up. There's certain people I see in my life where I'm like, man, like he's he's talked to God. Yep. Not like talk to God like in like reading the Bible. I'm talking like that man has talked to God. And it, you could tell because there's some people when they talk about God, they're not talking as if they're like, they haven't seen him. They're talking as if they've really seen him. That's and it's intimate. so crazy yeah. to watch him speak and generations will go by and they'll still like be listening to his words. Yeah, watch his motivational sense. like 
it's like a montage and they have like Billy Graham over the background. He was he was one of the best. So I listened to him a lot. Um and then I started listening to like or watching Apologetics. The uh, Watch the Case for Christ, which is a good mo- good movie, true story movie, um on like the evidence for like the resurrection. And it came to the conclusion it takes just as much faith to be like an atheist as it does to be a Christian. So it's like Well, you're believing you, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you look at like Pascal's like wager, Pascal, I don't know how you pronounce it, wager, which is basically like um the if you believe in a god and there is no god um you really don't miss out you miss out on some things maybe um or you don't believe in a god and there is a god and you miss out on everything in the Mm -hmm. afterlife so like there's like this wager that basically says that there's more good in in life that comes out of believing in something than than not because if you die not believing in something and it was true then you have eternity in hell but Mm -hmm. if we die with our faith even though it's not true we really don't lose anything at mm-hmm. the end of the day. You mm-hmm. might lose some things that you think are going to please you on earth today. Really don't. Uh, you know what I mean? So no, it's better 100%. to believe Georgie says this thing. all the time. Yeah. I think we have this conversation yeah. all the time. Yeah, we've said the same thing. This is Alex Honnold. For those of you guys that don't know who Alex is, Alex is the greatest free solo climber to ever exist. And he just retired to climb his next mountain, Thumb War Challenges. So we decided to hit Venice and see if there's any competition. I love your smile while you're fighting. Oh, there it is. Right, like, you get 250 bucks and a year supply of soap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say joints. I was like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, who do I gotta play? One, two, three. Oh my God. Do you want to try? No, I'm okay. When you shook my hand, I immediately knew where I was gonna go. I'm Jeremy Patroncio. Your nickname is Tank. I was ninth in the world in arm wrestling. He looks worn out, so. Ooh, he said, you're worn out. Four. Go. One, One, two, three. It is over with. Oh my God. Breathe. Don't forget to ah. shoot. Oh, one. Two, three! Logan drove all the way here to be a winner! A winner! At the end of the day, there were some winners and there were some losers. If you see Alex in the wild, go ahead and challenge him for your chance to win Dr. Squatch free soap for one year. I got to a place in my life, dude, where it's so undeniable that even, like, I'll sacrifice career moves. And, you know, I wasn't always on my platform praising. But it got to a place where if you believe... And I do believe sometimes the fight isn't trying to get other people to believe it's getting other people to see what it's doing in your life. Yeah. And so when I have conversations with Muslim friends or, or Buddhist friends or people that don't even like believe in any type of higher power, I think what we got into um, the habit of is just arguing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like we just want to argue. We're like, no, 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 your God's this and my God's that. And it's just, yeah. I think that's why like the best way to preach was the way Jesus did it and it was by example. A hundred percent. Yeah. When somebody sees you being such a good man, an outstanding man, a righteous man, mm-hmm. and watching your fruits bear in front of them, they're gonna be like, yo, I wanna be a part of his garden. Yeah. Well actions like don't lie, you know? Yeah. Because I think everybody everybody's full of pride and everybody wants to be the person who's right in an argument that no, no, I'm the one who's believing in the right thing, so you should listen to me. Rather than being open to what the other person is saying and like maybe they're right, maybe what I believe is wrong. Yeah, and also not yeah. everybody's doing it with bad intentions either. Mm, like there's just, there's I'm, a lot of priests that like um will use the fear tactic the same way our government I hate does. That, bro. The same I've way I've seen that on TikTok, dude. It's bad. And it also it's it's like it it doesn't help support the community that you're a part of if, if you're scaring yeah. people out of here like first of all it, it when you use your words instead of the lord's words you're using broken words mm-hmm. it, his is bulletproof there's been people that try to go inside the bible and defunct it and like they just get baptized afterwards because they're like my god this is like it's a perfect thing i can't break it down it's tied with our history that's why our calendars are banked off the bible like there's reasons why I choose to go off of his words and not mine because, bro, next week I could be learning more about myself or about him. And I'm like, oh, my God, like I steered this person wrong. So when you're trying to come at it from a pride, like, oh, I know what I'm talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. It, 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 you're only working with Satan because yeah. Satan knows the Bible better than you. So he's going to let you try to fumble the wrong words. Yeah, I hate the whole fear tactic thing because like I always I like say like Jesus didn't teach like that first off and then. I just started reading. I'm almost done with it. It's a book. It's called All of God by John Bevere. He's like a good pastor. Um, And it kind of goes over the having a fear of God, but not in that type of fear. It's a fear that's like a wholesome, holy fear that draws you towards rather than scare you away. It's like an awe and a reverence for a creator. But it's like a thing, a fear that casts out all other fear. Does that make sense? Well, okay, so... <sighs> There's, it, like, it dissects you, are, it. So it's you're so trying good. to talk about the fear of God. Yeah. Like so... The, I explain this to people all the time. Fear of God is not like 
Well, I mean, dude, the, it says the man who goes into heaven is a man who fears God, right? So you can't right. deny it. So we have to like explain it in a way where people are like, well, I don't want to be underneath a ruler that's making me scared. Yeah. It's not that. Regardless of how you feel about God or don't, you don't believe in God, you're going to fear something. Mm -hmm. So my thing is I'd rather fear God and then fear nothing else yep. than not fear God and fear everything else in That's my life. That's a good life. way to put it. Do you get what I'm saying? So, That's a good way to put and it. And also, here's another thing. You love your dad, right? Yeah. Would you be scared? scared of disappointing him yeah that's this is i yeah. literally did a podcast hey. on my like talking about this so you would fear that yeah. when your friends around you in high school were doing drugs and they were going and partying like you were saying in your little doc the reason why you didn't go out there wasn't because you were scared of like taking the drugs or having a good time or I getting laid no one's scared of that bro they're scared of seeing your face on your father when he's like why would you Put me in a position that, you know what I used to always think? My mom used to sit me down and she goes, don't let me be one of those mothers that get a phone call mm -hmm. saying your son's dead at a party. Don't let the rest of my life go nowhere because you couldn't call me. Just call me. If you need, I'll grab you. I don't care if you were drunk or if you're high, just call me. Yeah. And that fear took over my life because I was so scared that somebody would knock on my mom and dad's door and they would fall at their knees because I made a bad decision that it scared me to not do drugs when I was growing up. Yeah. So you're going to fear something. It might as well be something that's going to be beneficial for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not fear God? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I did, I did a, um, I posted a short, like a reel on my like podcast page, literally talking about like fearing God and it like hit the algorithm like crazy for that page. It was getting like, like, hit like 2 million interactions or something. And like the comments were all like, why should I have to fear God if he's loving? And I'm like, bro, you literally just like missed the entire point that I was explaining in that. It's like a healthy, holy fear. Cause if like, basically what I said in the video is that the reason why the society is going downhill in today's generation of Christians and everything is because of a lack of a fear of God. Meaning like you mm. continue in your patterns of sin because you don't have a fear of God. Like 100%. if you actually do, you'll break those patterns. I think I'm going to get grilled for saying this, but congratulations. You guys took God out of your school because you didn't want them praying in school, and now they're praying on your children. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's facts. <laughs> Sorry to say it. Like your children are the ones to go, bro. Look what they're installing in nowadays youth. You know what I'm saying? Like, it got to a place where anytime you want to remove God out of such a situation, like you're removing the light out of it. So, dude, do, your, do yourself a favor. Just at least do your homework on how it feels. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people don't like to reflect. They don't like to implement something and see how it works in their life. And uh, I, I'm just so tired of people blaming God when they're the ones pushing them out of the equation. I'm like, yeah. dude, you can't blame God anymore. You yeah. guys took them out. This is the sad part, and this is the truth about Christians. We do feel that power of God because we're in it, and sometimes we like to hold his might and smite other people in our way. And that's crazy because that's not our journey. Our yeah. journey is to show them his might, not use it to Correct. smite other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish more Christians thought like that because Christians it's are some good. of the most judgmental people and it ruins people's faith. Because they're faith. hurt yeah. and they're broken. Especially, <clears throat> especially in the Catholic Church. Because, I've seen a lot. Because they're hurt and they're broken, bro. Like, I, I went through this whole thing with my mom because my, my Assyrian church does things where I'm like, yo, that shouldn't be done. This shouldn't be done. Blah, blah, blah. This, this, this and that. And bro, like the more and more I grew in my faith, the more I was like, okay, I could kind of understand it. And before I came at it in such... A disrespectful way. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you like a, a a very personal thing. Me and my mom were going back and forth on like saints, okay. and like, hey, like I don't think we should be fasting for saints. I think that's totally wrong. I don't think Peter would be appreciative if we're dedicating a day to fast in his name, when it's really just about God. Yeah. So we went back and forth, and me and my mom would only yell at each other at the top of our lungs when we're talking about God. Yeah, <laughs> and I I could not understand this, and and one day I got on my knees and I was sobbing because I was like, okay, dude, I love my parents so much. I got a place next to them, next ne literally like oh street down, because I love spending time with them. And I go, well, this is crazy. I love spending time with them, but I can't spend the time that I want to spend with them talking about the gospel. So I, one day I get on my knees and I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm asking God. I go, God, like, how do I communicate with my mom? How do I let her know she's not doing it right she's doing this and she's wrong and she's da 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 and she's da 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 and god goes hold on you're regardless even if you were right you're missing the order yeah. it goes father father mother children why are you stepping above your mother as if she's your daughter mm -hmm. come with her with respect so one day i came and i and i, I was like hey mom 
God basically opened my eyes and told me that the way I was talking to you, it came from a, a very uh, confidently like angered, like faithful, like I, I want to show you this, but like, you know, that, that, that passion. That's what I'm saying. It comes from passion. But you have to check yourself. Yeah, 100%. Because what we do as humans is we, we put our emotions before our obedience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't want that. He says, be obedient. That's why he says stuff like, be angry, but sin not. Mm -hmm. So I came, I humbled myself. And then we, in one hour, went over one year of things we were arguing about. And wow. God says, I can't work in your life if you move the way Satan moves. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you see these people that are hurting and they're justifying or they're, or they're putting out God's word, but in a very bad way, Instead of telling them or getting angry, dude, I know this sounds crazy, but ask God, be like, open their heart and mind. Mm -hmm. Have them be peaceful at your peace and not theirs. Do you, do you know what I'm like? Yeah. Yeah. You should be I, a pastor, bro. You're really good at, you're like, you remind me of my pastor, the way, like when I talk about things, like you really dissect it well I, in a way that's like But you also do too, that, that, that reflecting, that, that <sighs> thing where I could see it in you, where you, like you breathe because I could see in your brains rapidly moving and mm -hmm. you're seeing so many things, but what you're not doing is believing that this is like, this is something that you need to be reflecting on. Yeah. And I could see it's overwhelming you. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I told my friends and my sister here? I said, I got to look at you in the face and tell you one thing that's going to devastate you, but it might change your life. You need to be scared. You're like you, you're, you need to be okay with dying. Yeah. You need to be okay with it, bro. I've, I've been like thinking about that recently because I hate flying. And when I found out I had to come out here again, I was like, mm. I was tweaking. I was, in, <laughs> I was in the shower in the morning and I was like, I was like praying. I was like, God, please don't let me die, bro. Like I like, I, something about me not being in control scares me. Mm -hmm. So like I have to fly tonight and again, I'm tweaking over it. But I'm like, I'll start bumping <laughs> worship music like the whole time through my headphones. Like when we leave, as soon as I get on the plane, I like pray with, with Joey before we get in the, like on the plane. And like, but I feel, I feel like I've been trying to be okay with dying. Yeah. When, I was, I did. when I was a kid, dude, I had this thing and, and I've never said this besides Bell. My sister and my mom knows it. These are the only three people that know this. I was a kid. I was like the sixth grade, maybe fifth grade. And I kept having visions of me getting massively murdered, bro. Like, like really? viciously murdered. But when I was older <laughs> and I was already in the light and it was only because I spoke the word of God in my media. And so I was like really scared. So in the fifth or sixth grade, I went up to my mom and I go, mom, like I fully, like it, I prayed about it. And I was like, God, I'm tired of this. And God put this peace in my heart. And he says, well, if you die, where do you go? And I go, okay, I'll go with you. So like, should it really be worried? And that's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. So I go, okay, well, he's already conquered death. So I walked up to my mom in the fifth or sixth grade and I go, mom, I'm going to die at a young age, but I want you to be completely okay with it. And she started sobbing her, straight into her face. I was in like, fifth grade. Can you imagine your child walking up to you and saying that? I would, I would fall. I don't know. So, <laughs> so weirdly enough, I had a weird, like I had a weird childhood. I had a, like a really close relationship with God ever since the very third grade, like very close. I would go to church by myself and talk to him in the parking lot. Like not like he would form in front of me, but I would just sit there and talk out loud as if he could hear me. And so this is one of the times I came home. I was like, mom, I'm going to die at a young age, but you got to be okay with it. It's in his will. And then I didn't know, but to realize that, bro, that of course, okay. So as much as you know, your purpose, the devil knows it better than you. Yeah. So what is he going to do? He's going to have you be scared of life so you can't move in life. So if I break the chains of death, like, okay, dude, I don't care if I die or not. I'm going to go on my podcast and talk about God. I don't care about the views. Yeah. I don't care about me dying in a car accident or a plane because I know you exist. I know what's going to happen in my life. I know what's going to happen to my soul. Boom. As soon as you remove death from the equation, bro, you kind of live like you a feel superhero. more free. Well, you don't give a cr like I know we're talking about the Bible. Well, you don't give a shit, bro. You don't care. Nothing matters to you anymore. The only thing you fear is God, and that's what you need to focus on. We were just, just talking about the fear of God, but you can't have two fears, bro. You can't have be fearing of God and, and then, then fearing fear of death. death because then you truly don't believe in one thing. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? May I add Reflect something? Yeah. <clears throat> just because. That I, I thought about this when you said that, you know, you it's something scares you, but not being in control. Mm -hmm. And I think like from watching your video where you explain kind of like what you had been through. And I think like maybe and because I can relate to that. I think when I was younger, too, I didn't have a lot of control on what like what was going on in my life. I didn't have a lot of control in my childhood. And I feel like maybe you had the same thing where you didn't have a lot of control of what was happening around you. Yeah. So now being an adult, you're like, I need to know what's going on. You want to have control because that's 
that feeling scares you. Mm -hmm. And I went through the same thing. I was a really big control freak, you know, like I would really wreck myself because I just wanted to be in control of everything that was around me. And I realized that was only hurting myself. And then I think like once I came to terms with knowing that what happens will happen, regardless of whether I stress about it or if I don't stress about it, it it's, it's going to have the same outcome. Yeah. So while I'm in this moment, rather than just stressing this moment, not enjoying this moment, giving myself anxiety, I know that it's going to be fine because it's already in God's will and God has me and I have faith in that. And so rather than ruining my moment right now, I'm going to enjoy it because I know that when I like leave or when I land from the plane, the same thing will have happened whether I stressed about it or not. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I think, I mean, I'm happy you bring that up because like I had, I had a pretty bad childhood. Like I, I was blessed in terms of like, I didn't have to worry about money or anything. Like my dad always made good money. But in terms of like being an only child and my, my parents' relationship was like, we they it was like a divorce that lasted like four years of just like saw a lot and heard a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have at like mm -hmm. a very young age. And mm -hmm. I was like extremely just I'm isolated. I'm sorry to deal with that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm happy because again, I don't think I'd be here if I didn't go through that. Yeah. Um, but it was like a lot of uh, like isolation um, being like an only child going through that. And then um, I think that's like, I don't know. That's like definitely... It's still, I'm still obviously being molded and transformed through Christ and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but it definitely still has a wearing on me, especially when I find myself um, focusing too much on like business, social media, and drawing away from God. I feel it always like it gets worse again, like it comes back and I could see it in more things and then I have to like kind of reevaluate. And one of the reasons why I did, I started my little, it's not even a podcast, it's literally just me talking to a camera. And I literally was saying in the last one, I use it as a therapy session now. I say the things to the camera that I'm trying to tell other, other people, but I'm, I'm trying to tell to myself. You know what I mean? Mm. And I'm aware of that. Also, two things. I'm glad I brought up that faith thing where you have to pray and fast. I, uh, yeah. I because think I, I feel to. like this might be the thing that you can't do on your own. And there's yeah. always going to be one thing you can't do on your own because then you could see God's mercy on us, right? Mm -hmm. Man, for 15 years of my life, I've been dealing with this. And then one time I pray and fast, it's gone. Then you're like, you really have a testimony. Yeah. And then two, you got to be careful on what you say. And mm -hmm. it, it stresses me out like crazy because like even on this podcast, but I'm going to review it like a hundred times because I didn't come prepared to speak about the gospel, like everything, like a script. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking from my heart, but that doesn't mean that it's right. hundred percent. So your feelings can be misleading all that. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I learned is what you say matters, bro. Yeah. It, in the Bible, it says, be careful of your tongue. It's like a sword, right? Uh -huh. So if you're saying stuff that could cut, you know how people say it cuts deep? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it cuts too deep, yeah. right? So if you if you lead somebody because in the moment you're like, oh, I'm feeling this. But you got to remember you have a platform, which means you have a, a big power in your hand. So like ju I would just say be careful on what you put out. I know it's a therapy session. But if it's a therapy session, there's a lot of things that you're learning and growing from. True. So what happens if one guy looks up to you, takes this information as like puts it into word work, of, yeah, and then now he turns away from God completely because mm -hmm. of you. Now, bro, this is something I stress about because I see all the comments like, "How could he be a Christian when he does this, this, and that?" So, but it's staying bro. in my own lane. But the reason I brought it up is because it's really just for you. If you ever see people that are depressed or have anxiety. All the time they're saying, I'm anxious, I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. If you see people that are going to the gym or they're killing it, they're like, dude, I want to get a pump in. I, I feel healthy. I want to get, you're speaking it onto existence. You were made in God's image and God created everything from his mouth. Yeah, bro, I was just listening to something about this the other day. I yeah. can't remember where, but I've, I've, I've heard this type of And now, concept. it probably was. It might have been you. Were you watching stuff on me to learn yeah, about it you? it might have been Same, because like, <laughs> dude, because you're saying stuff, I was like, well, I've heard this. And I was like, wait, I just, yeah. I just watched this. I know, bro, I, I really, uh, I really appreciate your vulnerability, bro, because I want to bring, because I know your audience comes from, you know, bodybuilding and, and working out. So I want to yeah. use this reference in your life when it was really tough and hard. I want you to think of it kind of like how God was stretching you out like a muscle. When True. you when you are working out and you feel the next day that you're in a lot of pain, you mm -hmm. kind of get excited because you know there's growth there. Correct. So when you look back at those moments in your life where there's a lot of pain, yeah. just remember God may have stretched you out a little bit mm -hmm. because he knew your platform before you knew your platform. Yeah. So he's like, nah, nah, nah. This is my warrior. So I gotta I gotta bend him and and yeah. and and make sure he's he's versatile. Ready for that. For the war. You get what I'm saying? Because it's, it's going to take a lot to put a lot of people on your shoulders. And, dude, to turn on a camera and talk to 
10 people, let alone 700, 800,000 people that were watching that vulnerable video you made. Yeah. I know millions of people would be like, nah, hang me, put me in the chair. I'm not doing that. I'd rather die than do that. Mm-hmm. That That's because you have nothing to lose anymore, bro. You, you literally have gone yeah. through the worst in your heart. And so I think all those times that you look back and you're like, God, oh, you know, that was really hard. Celebrate those, dude. Because nah. they didn't beat you, bro. 100%. That's what I try to like show other people. And that's like why I wanted to do that video is because like, seeing where God brought me from there to like now, it's like you have to see that it's a miracle that that even happened. Like I'm trying to show people that like once I like put God first and like dove deep into it, like not saying that you're going to become like prosperous or whatever by doing that. I mean, I think everybody's plan is different. God just happened to like bless me in, you know, certain ways, give me a platform. But um, I just want to show people like how that happened because like I was so, I, I really was about to off myself. It was bad. Are you scared of telling people that they're going to prosper <sighs> ridiculously if they believe in God because you're scared that they're not going to prosper and they're like, oh, there's no God? I mean, I think just like, I'm not going to say like prosper maybe financially, but maybe in other aspects they will. I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> every aspect. Yeah. And I will confidently tell anybody, you really? want to be rich, give more. It says in the Bible. I have been struggling with that. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I drove up to this guy. He's a billionaire. He lives in um, where, San Diego? No, it's up by Temecula, but like in Elmore, right? No, no, it's San Diego. We drove up to San Diego. Regardless of where he's at, billionaire. Super Christian dude. And I'm like, yo, is it selfish of me that I want this? Like, I want all this success and wealth. And he goes, what is wrong with wanting the best? And I go, well, how do I get here? And he's like, give. And I go, what does that mean? He goes, you want to be rich? Give. Bro, I swear to God. In the Bible, you will read, how many times do people say, don't test God? A lot. Do you know there's a Bible verse where it says, test God? Really? (laughs) Yeah, dude. How crazy is that? Mm. And you're like, what? And this is the best part. I know there's some stingy dork out there that's like, I don't believe in God, but I'll test him right now. Give. Give 10% of your money away to somebody else secretly. Let me give you an example. This hand shall not know what this yeah. hand gives. Okay. So if you give and you give not in your own honor, but in his honor. So when you give, you say, hey, this is it for me. I just want to let you know God loves you. And God watches you on earth, dispersing his wealth that he gave to you to other people. I promise you, you're going to be wealthy. I promise you it's a fact. And I'll tell you why. It happened to me. Right after this man told me. I've been working in this industry for years, bro. Wasn't catching a break at all. Was already famous. Was already having all this uh, audience. I would make money but lose it really quick. I would uh, disperse it in the wrong areas, invest it in the wrong areas. I was just wasn't my financial state was always me check to check, even though my checks were big, but it was still check to check. Mm -hmm. And then one day I was like, okay, I'm going to quietly disperse this money. Now I'm not posting it on social media. I'm making make videos about it. I'm not tweeting about it. My girlfriend doesn't know about it. The only person that knows about it is my accountant because he's like, yo, where's his money going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was the best financial year of my life by like, it, it would have taken me all 10 years that I was out in LA to make what I made in six months. So it's interesting that you say that. So for me, when I had no money, when I had like, that's not no money. I had like two grand when I was like, I don't know, like when I was working with Joey and whenever I saw a homeless person or anything, I gave him all the cash I had in my wallet, whatever I had, I gave it to them all the time. I was giving to like anybody when I had none. And now I make a lot of money and it kind of came quick. Like last year, I mean, I started making money in like 2021 was the first year I actually like made money in my entire life. Um, and then last year I, I made a lot. Um, and I've been like, I've been talking, I'm having like a bunch of conversations with my pastor. We go meet a lot and talk about like, it, I feel like I know I should be giving more. Mm. And, but I'm just like also too, like paying like, like I was just had to pay taxes and stuff. Like you're scared. Hurt. You're scared. And I'm worried. I don't know. I'm hey, just, no, no, no. This is good. This is a great conversation. Yeah. Just turn the AC on. So what is happening here <laughs> is you have the uh, amount of money, right? Let, let me give an example. Tony Robbins said this. If you're not going to give $1 out of 10, you're not going to give a hundred thousand out of a million. The reason why is because you're not a bad person. You want to do good. So in your mind, you're like, let me take care of myself now. So then that way, later on, I could then take care of many people. Yeah. But this is the problem. My friend, you never took care of yourself. Yeah. God took care of you. Correct. So for you to stand before your mother and be like, no, 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 I got this. Let me figure out how to do this. God's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to our partnership? Mm-hmm. You were blessed because I gave you the ability to be opening these doors and mm-hmm. doing all this stuff. So for you to be like, well, if I give this out now, what happens if I don't get it after? God's like, what? What are you talking about? You shouldn't have even had it in the first place. But yeah, yet you still, a steward of it. you still fear it. Yeah. This reminds me of... um. 
the Bible verse when uh, Jesus was on the boat. You remember when he was with the disciples? Mm -hmm. So uh, do you know the story of Jonah? In the whale? Yeah. Yeah. So Jonah got eaten by a, by a big fish. And he was on his way was to it go. a whale? It, they say, it, no, it's this big fish. Big fish. It's okay. not a whale. People confuse it with whale, but it's actually a big fish. The, okay. And so he gets eaten by a big fish to go save the Assyrians, which is me. So mm -hmm. shout out to him. Thank you for that. My people would have never been alive if it wasn't for that. Uh, and Jonah was at the very bottom of the boat because he was so much pain in his heart because God said, get up, go save the people of Nineveh. But he was like, no, I don't want to do that. They're terrible people. Like, oh, where are you? you remember in the beginning, we're like, yo, those people need to go. But God had a plan for those evil people. So he goes, go. And so he lays at the very, very bottom, bottom of the boat. And he's crying and he's sleeping at the bottom of the boat. So when the disciples now future are on the boat, where's Jesus? Jesus is at the very bottom of the boat and he's sleeping because he's fulfilling every prophecy that we did wrong. So he's at the bottom of the boat and he's sleeping and, and Simon and Peter, you know, Simon Peter wakes him up and he goes, we're going to die. We're going to die. These waves are huge. Now he, they watched this man do miracles already. They've already seen him do everything the same way that you've done in your life, right? You see mm -hmm. God everywhere. Yeah. But there's moments where waves come at you and you're like, yo, life is getting crazy. I feel like I can't breathe. I'm underwater. You get scared, yeah. And God says, what faith do you have? Come, right? So he goes onto the water and Peter's on the water, right? So when he's walking, he fell. But if you read the scripture, he says, quickly, Jesus reached out and grabbed him. So Peter was right here on the water and Jesus was right here. The times are going to get really crazy in life. They're going to go all over the place. Mm -hmm. But if you keep yourself near Christ, those waves will flatten and you could walk on them. So when you have circumstances where you're like, I want to do good, but I'm scared because this is the money that I have now. And for people that are wondering at home, why is he worried? Is because social media says we're on our own bosses. So when yeah. we do a brand deal, we get that money, but we don't know when the next deal is coming Correct. and yeah. it can get scary. So in your mind, you're like, I want to do good for you, God, but I'm scared. I need I have my family, I have my friends. I got to take care of I have people that have, they, their bills are paid off of me. Fear <sighs> not, bro. He's going to prosper you. So when you, I saw it right away when you're like, I tried to tend not to tell people it's going to, no, bro, that's the devil saying like, yo, if you go to Jesus, things might not change. And I'm scared that you're not going to believe. Listen, you cannot have Jesus Christ in your life and not change. It is impossible. Yeah. If you it genuinely, is impossible. If you actually like. If you didn't get money while you have Jesus is because your heart is corrupted. <sighs> and when you have money, you will do very terrible things because there's two gods of this earth, the God of money mm -hmm. and Jesus. So. Yeah, I'm happy. This is like helping me out. A yeah, lot. good, like dude. I'm glad. <laughs> this is helping me out because now I can understand and, and articulate in a little better way. And I get nervous talking to people because, dude, I, people always like right away. You're like, you should be a preacher. And like immediately I always tell people, I go, I'm good enough to be muddy, dirty, gross. Mm -hmm. I'm in the mud, but I'd rather preach to the people around me. I'm, I'm in this mess. I'm in this gunk. But, like, that doesn't mean I have to ditch God because I'm, I'm trash, bro. You, like, this guy said, you don't clean up before you take a shower. Mm. You know what I mean? The shower is God. You go to get cleaned up. When we go to the church and we people are like, these are full of hypocrites. They, look at them. They're, they're judging. They're speaking. They're doing all this. They're lusting. Look at these girls. They were shaking their asses on Saturday, and they're in church on Sunday. Bro, that's like going to the hospital and be like, look at all these sick people. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, that's where they should be. They're here. They're learning. They're growing, dude. Mm -hmm. Once you really look at it from a, from a lens of only love, bro, like only love, mm -hmm. everything starts shaping out differently in your eyes. It's, everything's a point of view in life. Everything. Yeah. Everything's a point of view. So why would you not put it in the point of view of God? So when you're yeah. arguing with somebody or if you're scared of giving financially, if you just take a second to be like, okay, how would my God see this? Mm -hmm. You know you would see it differently. You know that if you were in a room and there was a guy that's bodybuilding now, he looks up to you, you're, you're shoulder to shoulder, you guys are benching with each other, you're, you're, you're spotting him, and he looks you in your eyes, he goes, is my life going to change? Am I going to be tired of keeping up with these bills? Am, is my mom going to get healed of cancer? Am I doing this? And you're going to be like this. Oh, uh, that's a lot of requests, bro. <laughs> it's a lot of requests. Yeah, yeah. But would you say that if God was in front of you? No. Nah, you'd be like, yo, the cancer is done, and trust me, everything that's in your heart and all those boxes you want to check, they're all going to be solved. Every single one of them. If you would like to try it, open up the Bible and read. I can't do it for you. 
but I'm not going to lie and say, like, I'm not going to get scared of telling these people. Bro, this is, like, you know what's so funny? People always go always up to me and they dap me up and they go, dude, this is crazy. You have so much balls talking about God in front of everybody, bro. I like, get that. I, yeah, all the time, right? And mm -hmm. it's the best feeling in the world. Thank you. But, like, I, I laugh because I was like, yo, my career didn't even start properly until I started doing that. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. All these doors started flying open. Bro, there are so many opportunities and situations that I have no business being a part of. Mm -hmm. It's because it wasn't me that did it. So how dare I tell somebody in front of me that, yeah, things are not going to change if you, like, I don't know, man, that's between you and God. No, I know it's because that's the one question that's going to separate him from actually following through yeah. the word of God yeah. and not. If the guy who he looks up to goes, well, I don't know if it's going to happen, the guy's <laughs> going to be like, I'm not spending every day reading the Bible. Yeah. I hate reading. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? I got you. That's a good point. I love this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. And I hope I'm not going crazy off of my tangents. I just, like oh, I said, like when it goes. I'm, have, this, I'm loving this. This is, I'm learning a lot. Is there anything on your heart that you've been like, kind of like sitting with? Like you're like, yo, I like. I, I think I'm happy you brought up the, the prayer, like the fasting and prayer. I feel like, bro, I move a million miles a minute. Like you can probably tell even now, like I'm, I'm always overwhelmed, especially when I'm traveling. That's why I like staying at home. But um, I've been. I definitely feel like I have to. So when you explain how you go about it, like how do you fast? Well, think about a fast as like a like a sacrifice. <sighs> mm -hmm. So how I think of it is this. And there, by the way, this oh, is wait. Scared. Sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> This is actually great that you're getting to kind of go through how you see fasting, and because I find that some of the things that you don't like when you're becoming Christian, the first thing that's not available to you is how to pray properly and how to fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so. that's always gonna that's gonna be in a relationship. So I don't want everybody here who's listening to very much remember, I am just a boy in this silly little town called Hollywood, figuring it out. The best way to figure it out is having a relationship. Like when me and you started dating, I didn't know anything about you or how to really be with you or how to work with you or understand your your emotions or understand your things that you need in life mm -hmm. um, until we went through trial and error. Mm -hmm. So I had to fail you a few times for me to really look you in the eyes and be like, I know I'm the right man for her. I'm good with her. Right. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. don't be afraid of like failing. Trust me, bro. <laughs> I fail every day, yeah. like multiple times. In yeah, fact, yeah. there's probably something I said in this podcast where people are like, oh, do you know that's what kills me the most is when I watch back something I said and I'm like, oh, that's definitely not what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I was like, oh no, I really didn't say it properly. Um, Wish you could do it again. I feel you. Nah, but I just move on. I just move on, bro. Like, I'm not going to sit here and dwell. I don't dwell, bro. I, again, everything is in his hands. So if I messed up, I literally think of him as like a little cute eraser and it goes, Ch -ch -ch -ch, and he like fixes it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll move on. Mm -hmm. If I sit and dwell about it, then I don't trust him to fix it. Mm -hmm. And then now we're standing still. Yeah. If I could just keep moving and know that he got me. But that doesn't mean I could go and sin. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying when I know I feel bad about something, don't feel bad. Move on. Yeah. It's actually a, it's a sin to feel bad too much. I, yeah. If you're, if I you're, talked to my pastor about that recently. I had that where I would dwell. I I'd be like, I don't, I don't even deserve to speak about him. And, and In there, a platform with, yeah, I feel like I'm not worthy. Like, why? I don't see why these people should be watching me. I shouldn't even be talking about this because I feel bad too because like a lot of people like will support me because of me being open about it and then I'm making money off of it and then mm. I feel bad. And I'm like, I, should, I don't even deserve that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you're not like, think about how much more money you would be making if you were taking all these other brand deals that you shouldn't be taking, putting girls half naked in thumbnails. You know, there's a lot of ways we could be monetizing way more, but we're not, we're choosing not to. You're, right. you're trying to like make a difference. And something we had learned recently was that, yeah, like who are you to to judge yourself and to, or who are you to for, to not forgive yourself and to keep hammering yourself about something when like God forgives you, you know what I mean? To a certain, right? Like, oh, of course, like God forgives you. And so it's like, who are you to oh, not nice. forgive yourself? Nice. You know? I love this verse. Uh, mm. and not a verse. That's just something I kind of, something that we learned. I told, I told you when you were going through this. Yeah. We learned, I can remember we went over it. She uh, was, she was dwelling over something that she already asked forgiveness for. Yeah. And by the way, it was nothing crazy. People it's do just, that. When you really have the love of God in your heart, small things matter to you. For example, I'll be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Masturbating is big to me. Yeah. Like if I watch porn, I like for three days will be very sad and I'm very right. like broken. Feel about dirty. It. Yeah. I just feel like I, like who am I to go do this and then tell people not to do it? I just fell on my Correct. wagon. Correct. You know? Rob, same yeah. speaking. So fasting. What I said is this: <laughs> if God sent His only Son to be crucified. Because he believed that you were worth forgiveness. Mm. Who do you think you are the to same. even justify yeah. that you're not? Yeah. You have no authority over that. Now you're just trying to go against his will. Correct. 
Now, let me go back to fasting. How I see it is really cool. I always think of myself as a king and queen, right? Like when I talk to little girls or little boys, I go, you're king, you're queen. And you have to, you have to really know that. And you have yeah. to move that way. But in this moment, we're talking about God, right? So he is the king of kings. So if I'm back in the day and I had a farm and I realize that there's certain type of people coming in and ripping my wheats out or like ruining my crops. Mm. And I can't handle this because there's too many of them. There's like a village amount of people. So I go to my king and I go, hey, I, I brought the best fruits from my garden. It's a sacrifice to you here. Could you please go take care of these situations that I cannot take care of? And the king goes, okay, I'll honor you. Go. Yeah. So this is what I think fasting is. When you give up something for God, you have to be very in your heart, willing to know that you're, you're coming at your most vulnerable state, bro. Don't be fasting and going partying and drinking and smoking and hanging out with your friends. If you're fasting, fast with your whole heart. Mm -hmm. I, when I fast, my Syrian church teaches me no dairy, no meat. Fast yourself. So I did three days, no dairy, no meat. But you can eat other food. Yeah. Okay, that was like my main question, I guess. I mean, you I could... Think like working out. Like, listen, if you could uh, do only water, like I want to do one where it's only water for three days, mm -hmm. but I just was obedient to my church. My church is like, listen, for this sacrifice, just do no dairy, no meat. And so I was like, all right, it's my church. I'm, God's going to take it to them if it's a problem. <laughs> They're the ones told me. So I did no dairy, no meat. I fasted. Now, mind you, you could do other things. Like, for example, if you're addicted to marijuana and you want to uh, fast from marijuana... But you remember, what you're, whatever you're giving the king, it's something you hold valuable to yourself. yourself. Do you gotcha. get what I'm saying? You're not giving him like, hey, here's a water bottle. Like, like you know what I mean? That like, you hate like broccoli. You're like, I'll yeah, give up broccoli. God, <laughs> listen, listen. Take the broccoli and get rid of the cancer. Okay, yeah. the guy's like, this is how it works. You gotta give him something that is is very very big in your heart. Mm -hmm. And then when you're there, dude, like pray, be in his presence. A lot, yeah. Yeah, be in Seek, his presence. Him, yeah. And. uh it's crazy, and you'll know this more than anything, bro. Do you know what Jesus' name was before it was Jesus? Before it was Jesus? Yeah. I just figured this out. And by the way, please, comment section, if somebody's like a Bible scholar, like correct me, because this one I'm not 1,000%. But no check idea. this out. In the beginning was the Word, and the <clears throat> Word was with God, and was God. God was the Word. Yeah. John, right? Yeah. So Jesus was the word before he was. So like when people are like, well, it's easier because back in the day they had him. It's like, well, no, dude, he came as the word first, then came as man. And then now he left you the word. So you just don't want to pick up your Bible. That's your fault. You know what I mean? Like when people are like, I have a lot of friends in my life where they, they will fight me on what the Bible says, but have never read the Bible. You know what I'm yeah. don't, don't. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, to yeah. me, it's it's just I don't understand. No, I do understand. Okay, I figured that this is what I figured out. So tell me what you think about this. By the way, they were like an hour in, and I've definitely rambled. Either people love or hate this episode, uh, but I don't care because I love it. I found this to be true in my heart. God doesn't send a guardian angel to deliver you what you're praying about. God, I want a better physique. He doesn't come down with a magic wand and bless you with a better physique. Yeah. What he gives you is his point of view, which is wisdom. And wisdom yeah. will bring to you the tools that could conquer what you want to get done. So when people stray away from God, mm -hmm. I believe they stray away from wisdom. That's a good point. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I'm arguing, like, you know, you said, oh, I argue with some people. I don't argue with people because, bro, it's like arguing with somebody who's like talking about Assyrians when they don't know who Assyrians are. And I'm Assyrian. It's like, like I can't argue with you. You don't even know the rules to argue with. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, there's no point of arguing. It's it's pointless. When I when I go to um, like pray now, like for success and for things like that. Like, What's I don't, pray now? Like when I go to pray. Oh, I like you said it like it was an event. <laughs> no, well, when I go to like pray for things, like now, mm. like instead of how before, I like I, I pray for success, but I don't like say like I want to be more successful. I pray for like the, the tools, like motivation, um, like consistency, like that's like every morning I try to make sure that I, I like first like experience gratitude, and then I try to like ask for, give me you know ideas, give mm. me like it access to like a eternal type of like thought that allows me to make the things happen, and not just saying like oh like I want to be successful this year, make this much or whatever. Yeah. 
But going back to the the money thing, what I want to touch on, I feel like because my like manager and dad told me like it's like being a social media influencer, especially in the fitness industry, it's like a football career. Mm. So you got to kind of like milk it while you can, of course. while you're relevant. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to get my dad to retire soon. Like, and he gets you know a percentage of my brand and all that. Mm. And I'm trying to get him to quit like or leave work soon, like yeah. very soon. So I feel I'm pouring a lot of money into the brand. Yep. To have that happen sooner than later. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've been feeling bad for it. And like, I just got like a new car. And I feel bad for it because I feel like I'm supposed to be giving God that. And I feel like, can, like I feel like I'm not you, allowed you, to have nice things. It, and it, I feel bad you, for it. No, so okay. Let me clarify this right now, right here. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with you having nice things. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong. You earned them. You worked very hard for them. If you were getting nice things and, and jeopardizing other people, or hurting other people or stepping down on other people or taking away from other people's plates for you to have those nice things. Mm. Or if you're justifying those nice things to make you look better and have more quality to you. Like I know a lot of ball players or rappers would wear jewelry. So when they walk into places, people are like, Oh, that person must be. They get a watch. I feel bad about not going to lie. Yeah. I was with my financial manager. Though, you need to stop me. feeling guilty, bro. <laughs> bro. I do all the time. You need dude. to stop. It's, it's, it's a very gotta, bad sin, bro. Yeah. It's I know. Very I'm trying sin. to get better. I'm trying to get better at it. I just, I'm so overwhelmed. You're with disciplined everything. in the gym. You should be disciplined with your mind. Know what you yeah. should be or should not be doing and attack it. The better that you could attack your heart and your point of view on what's actually like destroying you, the faster you get over the, like the, the ickiness of being like, God, why am I even talking about God? He probably hates me. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? I bet you walk around being like, sometimes you talk to God and you're like, he's right here. And then sometimes you talk to God and you're like, I don't even think he wants to look at my face right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel bad. Or I feel fake. I think it's mainly just because I see like what other people say on social media, like to me. Yeah. And I kind of feel bad for it. And what, one thing that's been hitting me lately is like, I had somebody slide up on my snap story and they were like, cause I post like a lot of Christian things on my snap too. And they'll be like, yo, Alex, thank you for like pouring into our lives. And my past brought this up too. And like, it's been hitting me so bad recently. Like, thank you for pouring into our lives. It's like, I hope you have people pouring into yours. And like that hit me. I was like, dang, that's probably why I feel so like drained. And I feel like I give so much. Um, I try to make sure other people's relationship with God is better. And then focusing on mine. Mm -hmm. And I can tell mine lacks a lot because I'm trying so hard to like, I feel like it's like my job to like look after all these younger guys who follow me yeah, and like help them find it that I like forget for myself to spend time in it on my own. And it's I, I even recently, that's been like a big thing. Then let me remind you that you're not the hero of the story. You're the messenger. Yeah. And I think and you need to let that sink in, bro. You, you're, you don't want to take the glory, right? So when people go, dude, thank you, your dramatic response is, no, no, don't thank me. That's between you and God. <clears throat> yeah. So if you're not going to take the glory, why are you taking the pain? Mm -hmm. you're, yeah. you're not the hero. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're the right. messenger. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like your cup is, not, is being empty, then you need to do what I do. When I got to a certain level in my industry, that's when my hardest life came. And then God quickly reminded me, it's getting harder, so involve me a little bit more. So yeah. if you feel like your cup is empty, you're focusing so much on pouring other people's cups, you're not refilling your cup with God. Mm -hmm. So make sure you start your day with God. Don't get on your phone and looking at, at your Instagram and TikToks yeah. and people. But by the way, like, bro, like, I say this a lot as a joke. It's like a little, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this all the time. Somebody's going to come after me. But you're, the Apple phone, right? You know how it has a little bite in oh, Apple emoji, right? The theory is this. Too much is in your hands, bro. Too much wisdom is in your hands. You shouldn't be like consistently doctoring yourself or trying to figure out what you should be doing all the time. It's okay to have other people chime in with the comment section, but it shouldn't be taking over who you are as a human. Yeah. Let me give you an example. There was a study that they put this bird in a cage where a snake was. And the bird, when they put it in, was freaking out. It was like flying around, hitting the cages, it was trying to get out. That was its first sign. Then all of a sudden, it calmed down. Then the bird was just sitting there looking at the snake. Hmm. Then the bird got comfortable. And the bird got like this close to the snake. Okay. And then the snake just opens up its mouth. And the bird just hops in its mouth. And then the snake eats it. What's that showing you is whatever you have your eyes on is what you're going to be drawn near to. Mm. Sin is sin is described to be coming through you, not to you. So in the Bible, it never says sin's coming out like uh, is coming at you every single direction. No, 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 no. Mm. 
Mm. You welcome sin in your life. So what are you putting your eyes and ears on? You say you bump Christian music, which is great. Yeah. But what are you absorbing when it comes to TikTok and Instagram? Mm. Look how people are always saying, oh, TikTok is dividing us. It's it, it's sent by yeah. China and 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 now we're divided. It might be true. Mm-hmm. It might be true, but also it's like who's taking the accountability on what you're watching? Correct. It, you no one's putting a gun to our heads being like, "Yo, watch these porn stars on a podcast talking about getting railed and then pop culture." Even though 90% of people on YouTube are watching that. And then they get why isn't my relationship working? Cuz you're addicted to porn. You get what I'm saying? Like, that stuff's terrible. Yeah, of course. That's why when people are like, you hate women that are standing up for themselves and doing OnlyFans. No. I love those women more than their boyfriends and their agents and their managers. And I'll tell you why. Because when that girl's no longer beautiful, her boyfriend's out. When that girl's no longer profiting, uh, prof, uh, profiting off of her nudes, her manager's out. Her agent's out. And she's left alone with the decisions she, she made that she thought she made with people that loved her. But what really happened is people were trying to milk it. And so was she. She was trying to milk it for the opportunity. Now, this is for guys and girls. You take the easy way out. You're taking the easy, the quick way out, too. You know what mm. I'm saying? So what do you have your eyes on? No, don't worry about it. What do you have your eyes on? That's a very big thing. You know they say in the Bible? It says the eyes are like the windows to your soul or some stuff. Some, some like in this context. I don't know exactly verbatim what it is. But it's true, bro. When you're skiing down a mountain... What do they say? Don't stare at the trees. Don't concentrate on the trees. When you're bobbing through the trees, Mm -hmm. don't stare at the trees. Stare at the open ways. So your body goes to the open ways. If you stare at the tree, you focus on the tree, Um, you hit the tree. So I focus on whatever I truly feel like would be in his will. Yeah, my my pastor and I were talking the other day at dinner about, um, he basically told me that like, uh, we were, I was trying to like talk to my manager, trying to get him to like start talking to God and stuff like that. But we were saying how like basically once you make Jesus like your North Star in life, like you start seeking the th- like you seek that you may like stray away from it like time and time again. But um, I feel like a lot of like Christians in today's generation they don't have Jesus as a North Star. They like you know claim to be Christian and whatnot, but they don't um they're not actively pursuing it. Once I started like making Jesus my North Star and like having the fear and the healthy fear of the Lord and stuff like that, that's like um. It's allowed me to break these like sinful patterns and and like or be aware of it more like because it's almost like that north star is like brighting mm. those parts of my life. It's it's guiding you through. That's life. yeah. I love so that. that. Like when you told me about that, I've been like that's kind of really clicked with me, and I'm trying to make sure in every aspect of my life is Jesus my north star. You know what I mean? Am I still pursuing after that, or is this thing that I'm gonna that I'm gonna go do or activity gonna you know take me off of that? So can I ask you a question? Yeah. Who is your supplier? Is it money or is it Jesus? Mm. Who is it? Well, like truly Jesus. Truly. Yeah. So then when you said, I want to set my father free in retirement, Mm -hmm. why are you depending on the money? To do it. To do it. Yeah. So you're stopping, you're doing the will of God, which is giving Mm -hmm. because you want to give freedom to your father, but that freedom is not coming from you and your wealth. And I think it's going to keep prolonging. I don't know how long you've been on this journey, but I think God's going to prolong it. I think there's going to be bills you're going to have to pay. I I think there's going to be situations you're going to have to dump Mm -hmm. because God's like, no, I'm not going to bless you blessing your father out because at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. you're going to think it's you that did it. Because in your heart, when you buy that car, when you buy that watch, Mm -hmm. you're like, okay, well, how do I have the money to do that? But I don't have the money to do that. Yeah, so I've been. Fe- that's why it's because I'm not giving. So like you're fighting that. yourself. So I feel like, yeah. Was, for, well, there, you know what Bible projects are. The, the, the YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's this video that they created that I really loved, and basically they made it look like a wedding feast, and like. When you're I think at I've a, seen this. Yeah, I just yeah. want to explain it to them so they can hear. The, when you go to the feast and there's like, you know, there's like a bunch of endless meals and drinks, no one's worried about like, oh, I got to go get that pizza because I know it's going to be gone. Or like, mm. And then you're also not looking at this person to make sure he's not grabbing that pizza. Yeah. Right? You're so worried about other people when the, when the food count is low or the money count is low. It's like you start pocket watching people and like, you know what I'm saying? Like you start monitoring other people around you when you realize what you have. But if you have an endless source, then you just want to give it all away because it's endless. Correct. So the reason why you were projecting that way is because you didn't have an endless source at the time. Mm. And so now if these thoughts are still invading your head, 
Bro, I'm telling you that fast and prayer might be like the push over the edge for you. Yeah, no, I probably will do that. I'll do it I, with I you, bro. I was just trying to think of like what exactly to, to fast because I still have to like lift. That's all. <laughs> so I, I like, that's why. God, I honestly, listen, I listen, listen, God. I know, I know you want me to fast, but these gains, bro. I was gonna, like, I was like, how am I gonna work out if I can't eat for three days? I'm like, I'm gonna literally turn into a twig. I feel like. That's what, I, that's what I thought fasting. If I can fast, like, if I can still eat something just to make me so I don't lose weight. Yeah. Then, like, I'm 100%, like, down. I got You know what? We need to talk more because I feel like I just got to ask you very blunt questions and I'll, like, answer yeah. what you're feeling. The, I'll just answer. Like, ready? Yeah. What's more important, your physical health or your spiritual, spiritual. health? Spiritual. Okay, so what are we talking about here, bro? Yeah. Like, three days, four days of, like, taking off? Or, like, yeah, yeah. No, one, no one's going to go to your YouTube channel and be like, unsubscribe. Bro, like, I, I just, I, I'm just such a, like, I have, like, extreme OCD. That, that's yeah. where a lot of my anxiety and stuff stem from. Interesting. And I'm very like I have to pro like have progress in everything, and I'm extremely hard on myself. Mm. And it's like you ever heard of like like uh, what is it? More money, more problems. Yeah, like, of course. It's like, it's like that. It's like I keep trying to topple things on, and I feel like I have to keep doing more and more things, mm. and it gets so overwhelming. And I feel like if I was to take away from any of those things or make it harder, then I'll just like fall apart. I don't know why I'm just so hard on myself. If I don't if I don't post on YouTube three times a week. Or if I'm like doing something, I miss a post on Instagram in one day. You think everything's I, gonna fall apart? I freak out. So that's and your I'm faith, so hard bro. On myself. So you okay? So this you you your faith needs a little like yeah rejuvenation. Hundred percent. It, it's it's basically if you're if you're feeling that if you fast for God, it's gonna take away from you. Then your priorities are in the wrong place because yeah. you're starting to you're you're telling me from your actions and what you your verbiage is telling me you're telling me that you did all your success. Yeah. So if I miss YouTube videos, then I'm gonna fail. But mm -hmm. it's not your YouTube videos that made you successful. It's you know how many people make YouTube videos a day? Yeah, uh, wow. millions, bro, <laughs> millions. And so they didn't catch fire. So like when mm -hmm. you when you say if I miss this, then I'm gonna fail. It's it's not fair to your partner who's like, yo, I'm I'm giving you all this opportunity. I'm giving yeah. you all this. And you can't even think about him as an actual human being. That's what I do. So mm. when I'm in these meetings or if I'm shooting something or if I'm doing something, I literally have conversations with my team, but then I also have conversations with God. There's been a lot of situations where I had to walk away from when I'm like, man, that is going to benefit, like benefit me so much. I have to take this. I have to take this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And then, you know, like I'm justifying it. I'm doing my thing. But then the obedience is what really describes love, right? So you have mm. to be obedient. For example, you love your, if I love my girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. I could tell her all the day. I love her. I love her. I love her. But if my actions are when another girl comes by, if I'm flirting with her, correct? then the obedience and the love is, is not, not righteous. There, yeah. It's not there. So when you're going through that and you're saying, I, 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 you're ex- you're like just excommunicating with him now. Yeah. So it's your fear. It's yeah. really your fear, and you need to put more faith in it. You really yeah, what's, need what's to crazy, practice what you're preaching. I know. What's, yeah, that, no, that's why I say like the, the podcast is like a therapy thing to me because it's me allowing myself to have time to really vocalize it. And like, I, because I'm so, I've always been extremely self aware. Like, I know of the things, I just like make excuses. And I know the excuses are like just like, like the devil, I guess, telling me to mm -hmm. stay where I'm at and not change. Like, I'm so aware of it. It's just I don't have a lot of, um, I guess, especially where, where I'm from, I don't have, uh, like, I, I literally have no social life anymore. Like, it's all business. So it's all making content. You need to change that. I don't have, a, uh, like, a community of um, people to check me. Yep. It's more of, like, I have to find it myself. Or That's the worst, bro. Yeah. I, I, I recently went yeah. through that. And it's, it's the worst when the people around you are not seeing what they should be or doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you mix yourself in with the wrong people, it, it corrupts you. Regardless, we are sheep. So like when we move around with sheep, we're gonna do what the herd you're does. Gonna, yeah. So you gotta be careful who you hang out with. You are who the you terms is you you are who you hang out with. Yeah, correct. So if you're not hanging yeah. out with people that are are, are bringing you up, you're gonna bring people that are down. Yeah. I actually want to talk about girls with you because this really? this brings up the the scenario that I talk about with guys when they bring up romantic stuff. I say girls or guys will only do two things in your life: either bring you up. Or bring you down. Mm. No person's ever entered your life and you're like, I'm completely the same. Like it's it's yeah. it's yeah. going to go one way or the other. Correct. And I remember watching when I was reviewing um, stuff on you, you said that you fell out of love with God in 2020 because of a girl. Yeah. Um, do you know who else did that? 
Yeah. Everyone in the Bible, bro. Uh, everyone. <laughs> We're talking about David. He killed yeah, his best that's friend. True. Solomon. That's a good one. I go back to like I like to read through um like Psalms and stuff. To but do you read it because you're like she got he did it. I'm good. <laughs> like, that is how I want to see his point of view. Who and, David's? Like, yeah, and I want to relate. It. Proverbs is the yeah. best. It's the best. Um, no, I'm sorry. Proverbs was written by Saul, uh, King Saul, Psalms, Solomon. He's, he's got Psalms. David wrote some Psalms. Psalms, so. and then Proverbs was by the wisdom that God gave King Solomon. Yeah. Uh, which is awesome. Think about him, right? So he had all the wisdom in the world and he was running the economy of Israel like crazy. These things were turning. Mm -hmm. You know when everything fell apart? Is when a girl told him, hey, you should worship this God. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because as, as much as we men think that we're conquering this world, we're only conquering this world to give the world to a woman mm. or whichever you're That's in true. love with. No, honestly, that's, true. that's why I, I feel like I try to work so hard because I know I'm going to have like a family one day. And although I don't have no idea who they are, what I do today is what's going to set that up for them to live a life that I would want them to live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you want to give them the life that you wish you had when it came to a home. <sighs> yeah. And for the most part, we're a driven, good loving thing. Yeah, we're driven by love. You know what I mean? For the most mm -hmm. part, like we're all driven by love, whether you're looking for love, to love somebody or to be loved, like... Oh, fair point. We are like the circle wheel of love. You know what hit me the other day? I was reading, I was flipped to a random verse. Like in the mornings when I'm at home, we got like this new house. It's really peaceful and stuff. I'll like wake up, have coffee and go outside and read the Bible in the, like in the woods. And um, there was one thing I flipped through that was random. I think it was something with King Nebuchadnezzar. And it was something on, I guess. I, That's I, a I cool don't know name. If, if it was that king or if it was someone different. But it was someone basically had a lot of power, wealth, all this stuff. And God had to take it away and humble him. And then for everything to come back, he had to get humbled. And I was so scared reading it because I was like, dang, bro. I was like, this guy trying to tell me like he's about to take a lot of stuff from me so that I can like recenter and reset. Well, you shouldn't fear that. Yeah. And I'll again, tell you I'm, why. So I'll give you a point of view. If right now God came in front of you and said, hey, for the next two months, I'm going to remove everything from you. But me mm -hmm. and you are going to have a paradise together forever. Yeah. Or for the next two months, I'm going to give you everything your heart desires, but you'll be far from me. Yeah. What would you want? I don't want to be closer. So th that's what I'm saying. You really have to voice this out and yeah. really talk because when you bottle it in, you're you're only talking with the devil and you're like literally in, sitting yeah. with your heart. You got to talk to people. You know yeah. when the Bible says two or more gather in my name, I'm present. Um, yeah. Now that's not because when you're talking to God by yourself, God's like, sorry, ones <laughs> can't be around you, dork. It's not that. In fact, he encourages you to be by yourself when you're praying. The mm. reason he says when two or more gather in my name, I'm present is because I could... Iron so sharpens check, iron. Yeah, you can check. We can help each other out. So all these things that you've been voicing that's in your head, they're, they're being solved like this. And you know what? Your head's going like this before I even say it because yeah. deep down you know it. Yeah, no. That's why it's, it's funny because like, uh, I was just complaining, I guess, by not having that. Usually I'm the one always talking. And that's like the first time where like I've like listened a lot. Which is terrible because I'm supposed to be the one that's listening. No, no, <laughs> it's good though. It's good. I kind of I like it like that because I swear I talk so much, but like this is the first time where I've been able to like take in what you're saying and it's really like enlightening. So, I love that, man. I'm yeah. I'm glad I'm doing that. I, no, dope. Sometimes I get worried that I'm like I'm going <sighs> overboard because I'm just no. so passionate about it. No, I'm the same way. Literally, I'm the same way. Yeah. It's just you're. It's finally someone I'm talking to who like gets it the way that I get it, or is like. I'm not trying to like, I'm in the most humble way possible, just like spiritually more mature than anybody else I have, have had around me in a long time. So it's allowing me to reveal things to, you know, mature my own spirituality. Cause I want every room that I'm in for like the last like eight months has, I've been the most, and again, in a humble way, but spiritually mature. So yeah. I have nobody uh, to learn from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's all mentors me. are big, bro. Yeah. Me mentors are big. I have a ton. I was blessed with a mom that is just unbelievable when I go she's like just just so sharp with it so I, I picked up from her behaviors mm. um and then you know throughout life I was very quick to learn oh he's doing really well let me learn from him yeah and so for example stand up Joe Coy I didn't just go into it prideful being like oh I know what I'm doing I went but it's also you got to be careful because you, you become who your master is so like if, if you're worshiping somebody who's who's reading a Bible that might not be the right Bible for you. Yeah. Yeah. It could be, it could I'm going to have to get one of them. I'll give you that one. I'll get, an, I'll get myself another one. Um, I want to talk about the, the girl part though. Like, okay. so, cause you know, this is, this is a big situation for guys. Cause guys are like, well, doesn't God want me to love somebody? Like, it, yeah. it, and it, and it, it's so crazy to say this, but it's like, no, when you watch these movies and they're like, Oh, you're my other half. Sorry, buddy. 
No, you're not. You know what yeah. I mean? There's no such thing as a soulmate, and there's no such thing as like my other. That's bull crap. I, I bro. agree. I was. I think love is 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 like completely selfless. I mean, that's what Jesus showed love to be. So like, I hate I hate that because if you like people who like believe in that or like oh I just met them and I'm like in love with them, it's like you're going off of a a weak foundation that's a feeling because once that feeling goes away then like nothing else is there i always say that choice like love is a choice like you you choose love, love is a choice yeah and you hit it right on the head and a lot of people don't understand that because mm -hmm. they think love is a feeling let me just give you some sex uh -huh. ed education which your feeling is lust that's right. not love because i know this is okay i know we're talking about god right now but i do have to talk about reality right now so like mm -hmm. this is going to sound a little poor and like pivoting the conversation but when a man finishes immediately the joke is oh i don't even want to be around this person anymore correct or if you're masturbating you're like why did i even watch that girl on porn i'm not yep. even interested in her which is crazy that's lust it's not love mm -hmm. imagine if you have to bank all of your money on lust which by the way a lot of people have mm -hmm. and it's not great it doesn't turn out great love is sacrifice yeah love is it's, obedience it's selfless yeah. people don't understand that um, but this generation, especially, do you watch porn? No. When I did quit you quit porn? About two and a half, two and a half years ago, I think maybe, th maybe coming up on three, maybe three. Yeah. It was before I started social media. So maybe 2019 around when I was, uh, before I got baptized January 5th of 2020. So nice. it was before that for sure. Cause I didn't want to get baptized knowing I was going to continue watching porn. Dude, I bet you felt like crap when you did afterwards, too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I know. Yeah, I was worst. like, I got to go get baptized. Dude, again. I got to get shower. <laughs> like, I like, sit in the shower yeah. for like 40 minutes. I'm like, yeah. I'm still dirty. Um, yeah. Porn, okay. I've cried. Oh, pff, like, dude. Like, fumbling. I've cried. Yeah. Like, it's terrible. I feel so unworthy. You, me and you need to chat. Yeah. I feel like whenever you get hard on yourself, you just give me a call. And then, like, <sighs> we'll sure. just talk That'd it out. Dope, yeah. there, let me just uh, circle back with the pornography because it, porn is growing at such a rapid speed right now mm -hmm. that I want to make it very clear. Me and Alex aren't giving up porn. Well, I would just say Shauna too, but she still hasn't converted to it fully. She still watches it every day. Fully. Yeah, right. It's disgusting. <laughs> it is yeah, gross. Right. I told her, put headphones on. The whole house could hear it. <laughs> and she says, no, I want them to know. Uh, <laughs> But, but us two, uh, the reason why we <laughs> stop is because it's better for us. We're not doing it to like, please God. God's not on a throne oh, on heaven like this. <laughs> Great. No porn for George today. I'm thriving. Yeah. It's not how it works. I'm thriving because I didn't watch porn. I love that. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? I, I like literally have been like trying to explain this to my friends and stuff like that, that like, God is not a cosmic killjoy that, <laughs> that like he wants you to have like the love and the desire. He, you have desires for a reason and he wants you to enjoy his creation, like sex and yep. all the things that come with that. But in the right boundary, I always say like, for example, like, like sex is like, like, or anything that life has, or God has given us a desire is like a, is like a fire pit. Like think of like a fire pit, like a bonfire in the woods. Like it can provide heat for everybody. Um, when it's surrounded, you know what I mean? When it's in, in a, in an environment like with, you know, stones and stuff to keep it in there. Like fire can cook things, purify water, do all these good things. But as soon as it falls out of that boundary, mm -hmm. it can cause a forest fire and kill, cause havoc. When That's I a talk great about analogy. sex, for example, yeah. uh, when like sex in this generation, STDs on planned pregnancies, mm -hmm. creating instability in relationships. Mm. So like God is not placing these boundaries so that you don't have fun. He's placing them because he loves you. And once you like are aware of that, it like frees you. And you start to honestly appreciate God more because you realize that he's really, he wants you'd experience those desires in a good way and he's trying to protect you by placing these limitations that you think they're limitations but they're yeah. really not. That was beautiful. You know I mean? That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that always is what stuck with me and that's what I try to explain to people. I'm like, bro, like, you think you're enjoying like watching porn or like hooking up with these girls and stuff like that but you're really just like hurting yourself and God like wants you to experience it in its fullest. You just have to be in that boundary to en enable to experience that and that goes for anything. 100%. I want to dissect it though so just in case somebody's there I'll be like, how does porn hurt me? I love it. It's quick. It's painless feels great get the job done and get back to work because people can make excuses be like oh i don't want a girlfriend right now i'm busy so i watch porn or i don't want to do this i want to blah, blah blah okay let me give you an example your brain regardless of how you are it falls into the category of patterns so you are a pattern human being so when you learn something it's because you've practiced it okay so let me take it back even more say you're in a relationship 
or say you're not in a relationship, sorry. So take it back before you're in a relationship. You're single. You're watching porn, right? That's the safest place men feel like they can watch porn. I'm not yeah. cheating on my girlfriend. It's yep. not bad. Okay. When you go on porn, let me throw you through the steps of what you're doing. You go to your porn site. There's a list of categories. You choose which category you want. Mm-hmm. And then from that, you, you pick which style woman you'd like or men. From there, you... Now fast forward to your points where you like enjoy the most and then you move on to the next video and to the next woman and to the next woman and to the next woman. You are suffocating and overwhelming yourself with so much sex and so much women and so many positions and so many uh, now now it's realtors or now it's uh, uh, girls are stuck underneath a bed or like yeah. now, it, now it, it's it's not it's no longer even stepbrother stepsisters legitimate brother it's like mother it's like getting so bad and these circumstances are growing in your heart mm. how is it possible that you would ever be able to be satisfied with one woman correct it's impossible yeah. if your eyes are focused on a redhead a brunette a blonde every single day you're moving past a black chick to a Puerto Rican chick to a white chick. How are you going to be satisfied with one woman or one man? You're teaching your brain that you are only satisfied when you have multiple options. Yeah. So it makes it super impossible to have a monogamous relationship. Mm-hmm. You know what? You know what I hate is when people say like, like how can I only or like when I say like you're supposed to just have one other significant other. Like how do I know or if waiting till marriage? Like what, how do I know if we're gonna be like sexually compatible? I'm like well. The way God designed in the first place is that's supposed to be the only person you would have ever been sexually intimate with. So there's nothing to compare it to. So you would have, there's no way you would even know if you were sexually incompatible because you have nothing else. That's like the way it was meant to be. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Born and stuff, you like get all these things that you like want it to be like. And then when it's not like that, then you're like, oh, this person isn't sexually compatible with me. I'm like, bro, you ruined it yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. Also, it's like. uh, Yes and no. I mean, yes. And no, but all, sad, okay, this is what the guy is basically saying. He goes, I've been fucking these hoes and they're throwing it back like crazy. This girl's a good girl, doesn't know how to throw it back. I'm bored. That's what's really yeah. happening here. And that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I know that was, that verbiage is very it, hard that's to digest, is. but I got to talk to the people that want to hear. And this is the truth. Uh, for the guys that want that girl to throw it back, all right, well, at least then teach her how to throw it back. That girl that was throwing it back ran through 150 guys to learn she how to throw it back. Points. You get yeah. what I'm saying? That's she not something you should up. be yeah. like very, very excited about. Training. But guess what? Yeah. You can, no, that's, train them. I know, I know. If I was funny. bad, which <laughs> we know that's not the case. But if I was, then you would be like, oh, like, hey, I like this or I like this. Well, yeah, obviously when you're with your partner, you like tell, and I think that's kind was of like training. Did like, that trigger you when I said training? Was that like a bad word? No, I thought it was funny. Oh, okay. Because well, I thought you were like, I'm not an animal. We can't train me. No, <laughs> I did not. Yes, you are. Let me tell you. No. Okay, first of all. Quit watching porn no, and then no. talk to us, okay? But, um, <laughs> but I mean, like, back to your point, it's when you are in love and when you have that connection and you trust that person, your intimate relationship will just be better because, like, you're more connected and you're in love. Nah, and it means more. Just that's a chick's listen, point of view. Because <laughs> it means more, fine, than for the girl. Then okay. it, it means more, okay? <laughs> And then also when you're with that person, yeah, you're building on like, you're telling each other what, like, oh, you do this, but I don't really like that. This is what I, or you know what I mean? You're building what you like with each other, which makes it better. Yeah, you know? I, I think what I've like realized recently is like talking about Why my, are you I'm laughing? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm laughing because like, I just pictured a dude being like, this girl could throw it back, but this girl's eye contact. <laughs> And she gets my soul. There's chemistry here. Like, All right, whatever. Well, I mean, I'm just, okay. Then we for, are animals. We're filthy. Then dude. for the girls or for some of guys who relate, I just think like, you know, one versus the other, one that doesn't mean much isn't, is never really that great versus one that means something and it's your love. It's so much better. Yeah. And I think when you give, when you love somebody selflessly in like in marriage, whatever, you don't even, not that you don't care about receiving, but you want to give because it's selfless so you mm. want to be the best thing that they would you you do what they want you do you submit almost to that one out of like the selfless love you want them to you know you know you see what i'm saying yeah. oh I, I you know what can to. i tell can i tell them what i told you like two days ago when i said i was sweating there we were we were in the alleyway and i was like yo i was reviewing this and i and i thought about it. i was like sweating about it oh yeah well let's tell the story and then again oh, then if you don't fine. want me we'll cut it <laughs> Uh, when I, so I was always chasing like a successful avenue in my life. 
because yeah. I wanted to show the world, like, listen, look, look at my art. Like, people know of me. Like, this was just this thing that I was chasing so much. Um, and when it got to a point where my friends and family, like, everywhere we went, I was being recognized. It was so cool. It was like the moment that I was oh, like I waiting for my whole life. And I was coming off a stage one time, and Reed was actually recording this situation, and I'm mic'd up. So, like, this is great. But two unbelievably gorgeous girls. Like, I'm talking, like, in my dream, this would happen. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, we, we have a hotel next door. We want to have a threesome with you. And I'm like, no. just fully bluntly like that. And I was yeah, like, yeah. wow, that's, that's literally the thing that I've been dreaming about my whole life to do. Mm -hmm. This is like a year into our relationship or like more a year and a half. Yeah. Like, like a year and, and a half into our relationship. And this is when the fireworks are like, you know, this is my girlfriend now. It's not, no longer like when I see her, it's like, oh my God, it's that girl. Does she like me? Does she not yep. like me? Yeah, that, like that beginning spark. So I sat there and everybody was giving me the advice of like, dude, like no offense, bro. But if I was in your shoes right now, I wouldn't be in a relationship, bro. You're young. You're like successful. And I was like, okay, cool. Then I'm looking up to my cousins, like older cousins. And they're like, mm. dude, we love Belle. She's a great girl. But if it's meant to be, maybe we'd, she'd come back. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, maybe. And then I one, <laughs> every single person was telling me, he's like, yeah, dude, no offense. But if I was you, if I was you, if I was you, if I was you. And all the advice was great. But I was like, all right, let me go back to the scripture. That's when I fell in love with David. Mm. And I'm like, oh, dude, I don't want to do that. So I wanted the heart of David. That's why I made the song called Give Me the Heart of David. But it was my, fire. It was good. Thank you so much. It was good. But the one thing that I said is like, I don't want to fall to lust. Mm. And I'm not going to lie, bro. Like I was a dog growing up. So when me and my cousins were at the, the mall, we would just always look at girls' butts or like boobs or like we're very sexually driven men. Yeah. And one day I asked God, I was like, God, I just, I, it, I want to honor Belle like it's your daughter. Like, I can't, I can't be having these thoughts. My pastor like, brought this up to me. You know what I mean? Like, the I don't. The person you're with seems as God's daughter, yeah. And, and I want to, but it's hard, bro. It's hard when you have patterns of being this dog-like person. And I'm like, this is not fair to Belle. Like, I shouldn't even be having these thoughts. And yeah. then my mom told me something that blew me away. She goes, those are thoughts, but what are your actions? And I was like, so I shouldn't feel guilty? She goes, you should only feel guilty of what your actions bring. So I told God, I go, God, I don't, I don't want to throw everything that me and Belle like had together because I truly, in my heart, I feel like she's the one for me. And so we were going back and forth, going back and forth. And I, and I went home and I told her, I said, Hey, I need you to pray with me. I'm having these really bad thoughts and I was super vulnerable and I let her know about it mm -hmm. and we prayed together about it. And next thing you know, bro, I'm looking at the same type of women, but differently. Yeah. Very differently. The girls that are like thirst trapping online, I'm like, I see them from like a more heartbreaking point of view now. Mm -hmm. And so my vision's changed. And then a year goes by and now I'm no longer having these type of thoughts. I'm, I'm, I'm in a totally better place. That's good. And one day I was going through something when it came to like a certain type of friendship and I was, I was having a meltdown and I was having a panic attack and I'm sitting down and I'm sitting in like a fetal position because I'm like, I just don't know what is the right decision that God wants me to make. And without even a beat, without anything, I feel a shoulder, like a hand on my shoulder and Belle's reading me a scripture while I'm on my knees. Mm. And I look up and I was the one that kind of opened her heart and mind to follow God a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking back and watching this woman feed me what I need to be fed. And I just start crying because I was like, my God, he gave me so much wisdom to go past these, no disrespect, these hookers, these girls that are throwing their bodies around for money mm -hmm. and trying to ruin what God built here. Mm -hmm. And I just started sweating. I go, what if I would have made the wrong choice yeah. and listen to everybody that was around me being like, if I was you, if I was you, if I was you, well, guess what? Not only do I have more than what I did back then. But when I look at this woman's eyes, I pray to God. I go, God, I want my kids to be more her than me. Wow. And I'm in such a good home right now. But that only happened because when I came up to making a decision behind closed doors and nobody knows besides me and God, I chose the way that God would want me to move. Yeah. And because of that, I know for a fact if I would have made that decision and left you because of some greed of like multiple women or multiple opportunities or anything like that. For the rest of my life, I would have wanted to blow my brains out because God gave me something so unbelievably beautiful and perfect, but my greed and my ego pushed me 
in the direction where Satan wanted me to go and not where God wanted me to go. So you have to be vulnerable with yourself. I don't have to be going online and talking about this. Yeah. And I know she's only confident because, I mean, you're a very beautiful and talented girl. But if we were average people, you probably would be like, hey, listen, let's not talk about that online. I don't feel comfortable about you telling the world like, hey, like he had thoughts or other women. But yeah. we know each other so well and we have each other's back in such a real way that we know at the end of the day, this relationship is ran by God. So mm. when I fall, he'll lift me. When she falls, he lifts her. This will give you the edge of not worrying about your partner. Mm. Now I'm not worried about well, who's she following, where's she doing on set, who's she talking to. Nah, we invited God. If she's up to no good, God will deliver me out of it. Mm. If I'm up to no good, I pray God smites me where I stand and lifts her into the arms of a man that would treat her right. And when you move this type of way, these are now instead of one wheel moving, it's two wheels moving. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a good point. Do we have to cut that? No, absolutely not. Because I, I, I feel like somebody's going to re re no. relate to that. And you know, spitting for sure. I think like, because it's an uncomfortable, I think what it is, it's an uncomfortable topic because you don't want people, you don't want your partner thinking like, oh, at some point, you know what I mean? Like he didn't want me as much or whatever, but it's not that. And I think it's something that it's a hard topic for couples to have. And it's a, it was a hard topic at first for us to have, but you have to. When you say you're with yourself at night, right, you're honest with how you really feel, but sometimes you don't want to hurt you, the, your partner's feelings, right? But we were honest with each other knowing that, like, at the end of the day, we're both just humans, mm -hmm. and you're going to see that other people are attractive. You're going to see a guy. You're going to see a girl. You're going to think they're hot. That's okay. It only depends like on how you're acting upon it on your mind. Are you, yeah, are you lusting after it? Are you making up scenarios in your head about it? Are you... Are you, you know, Loki flirting and making the wrong moves? Yeah. That's You're what matters. right now, dude. Thank That's you. That's true. And it's facts. And if you bottle it up, then it's just between you and the devil, like I always yeah. say, right? But and it's I, uncomfortable to I brought it that. to you. I knew it was going to shatter her. I knew it was going to be like, what? Why are you feeling this way? This is weird. And at first, yeah. I'm like, of course, I'm going to be prideful. I'm gonna be like, what? Like, you should only yeah. have eyes for me. You can't look at other people like that. And then I'm lying to myself while talking to him, acting like I never see anybody else and think that they're attractive. That's I not point true. out guys to her all the time. Yeah. I literally go, damn, that guy hot yeah but now we have that relationship where i could we could i could a beautiful girl could be standing and she'll point me and she's like look how beautiful that girl is i'm like wow she is beautiful or i could yeah. be looking at a dude that has shredded abs like for example you if you were walking by i swear to god i'll turn i'll be like yo look, 100%. At, dude, this, yeah. look at him he makes if me I check out guys Christian, all the time like you know like i'll say like <laughs> like i'll say things like that but we've built this best friend relationship because she knows yeah, me down that. to my core i like that and and i think when you hide things from your loved one you're only hiding the beautiful roads you guys could be taking yeah, I like and the then vulnerability. you sit on guilt well, have to that. have yeah. to be vulnerable man because when i was at my state where i was like should i have this conversation the first thing that i thought about was like bro if i'm having these feelings she could possibly be having the same feelings yeah i'm not a six foot four uh, supermodel with shredded abs, perfect hair, and my jawline could cut through a, a, a watermelon. That's not mm. me. I'm the funny guy that might <laughs> oh, make you feel better. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So, like, I was like, okay, if I tell her this, this is my dilemma, we could pray about it, and God forbid if she's ever going through something. Because here's the thing, right? She's an actress, correct? Mm. Okay, she goes to, to set, and her, her role in front of her is like this tall, gorgeous-looking man. How many times do you hear, oh, so-and-so broke up, and now they're dating their co-star, Blah, blah, blah. That scared the crap out of me because I know whoever lays eyes on this woman, when they know her heart, they're going to be like, yo, I have to wife this girl up. This is the perfect girl. Yeah. So when I send her out into the world, if I'm insecure with what I got going on in my heart and all the situations that I'm dealing with, then I'm going to be like, oh, she's for sure going to be up to no good. But if we talked about it, we laid it on the table and we also pronounced that God's in control. Then, bro, like I tell her all the time, like, go oh, cheat on me, bro. Like, it's fine. God will replace you with so much better. And I, I tell that to her to her face. Because I told her the same thing. If I ever disappoint you, if I ever stop providing or giving in love in, in, in any type of way, mm -hmm. I go, I pray that God will remove me and put somebody in your That's place. I can provide. Provide way, way better be. than I can. Yeah. And then if you That's have good. that theory in your heart, then you're just moving it. There's nothing better than being in a relationship, trusting your partner, because then now it's like you're back to back and she's taking on that side of the world and you're taking on this yeah. side of the world. But imagine if you're fighting the world and now you have to keep turning back because you're scared of your partner stabbing you. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like this podcast kind of went all over the place. That was good though. <laughs> No, I, have to pee, I have to pee so bad. I've been holding it for a minute now. Yeah. Should, we, should we wrap? We've been going for two hours. We could keep That's going. So. We could wrap whatever you want. I'm, I'm not going to keep going. I just got to pee. Can I pee afterwards? Huh? Can I pee afterwards? Can you? 
After me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Hello. Oh, wait, hold on. You could eat while we're, we're doing We're two hours in, bro. If anybody's listening right now, this, I don't think snack. they're going to be mad if you're snacking on an we're apple. We're back and a little lighter. This is the longest pod we've ever done. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. PR. Hmm. Uh, well, actually, I have something to, to kind of ask you. So, because, you know. Th- I'm so sorry. Can we. Can, Divi- uh, Divij. I just called you Divij. Reed, can we move the Bibles? Because every time I put my feet up, I keep putting it down because I forget the Bibles are here. <laughs> oh, now I can put Now you can put your feet up. <laughs> Um, cause something I want to touch on was because, you know, obviously you went through a time when, you know, you had, you went through really bad anxiety and you were in depression. Right. And do you find that at that time? Cause we were talking about how, like, you know, how powerful the word is and what you speak, like reflecting back on that time. Do you feel like you were very outspokenly, you know, negative and buried yourself in your thoughts of like anxiety and depression? Like, like back then when I was going through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like. I don't want to explain it. I felt I felt like I was uh, possessed, mm-hmm. like by a demon, like when at that point in my life. I don't want to explain it. I was so like negative and like uh, I don't want to explain it. I used to just think the craziest things. I don't. know. I felt like a freaking weirdo. Yeah. Back then, like I, I it's like so weird to say. Mm-hmm. I, I after so like I started really struggling when I was sixteen. I had my first little like um like love mm-hmm. like high school thing, mm-hmm. and she died. Um, right i heard you yeah, say that on we, we, your video which yeah. is absolutely heart-wrenching i, I you remember don't mind me asking how did she pass away they so she had like a seizure she said she was feeling sick and stuff like that and then she had a seizure had to go to the uh icu and i think she she had that thing like septic shock or something i guess like oh. i think i think what happened what i remember was that maybe she had like a like a uti that was left untreated and maybe the infection spread Oh no! That could happen like that. Oh yeah, because it goes. To, you know, like it goes. You don't treat it. It goes to your kidney, and then your kidney. And that's why you bleed when you pee, and then it. You know, and then it's just like this whole. It gets to your blood, yeah. and then you're done. Oh my god! So I'm pretty sure it was something like that, and like that was the first time I experienced like, because again, I grew up very lonely. So having like someone who was giving feeding into me, especially with women, I always had issues just because me and my mom don't have like the best relationship. But like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. So. And seeing her go, I was so mad at, like, God, at, like, everything. Um, and I think that's what, like, started separating me away from God for a minute because I grew up kind of a little Christian. Um, and I was so pissed because, like, I was like, damn, the one time something mm. good comes into my life that I can relate to, it like, gets mm. taken away. And I had, like, anger issues, like, crazy. I used to try to, like, fight people. I would, like, send people, like, death threats. And, like, I was, like, messed up. Um, I was so, that, that got me into lifting, though. So I started working out after that. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but like the pivotal, like sending death threats to like, yeah, I just started wanting to work out instead of murdering everybody <laughs> I see. It's like, great. I'm glad you pivoted. Like, I used to like, yeah, I used to like look at people in public and just be like, it, like guys. And if I thought that they were like looking at me or talking to me, I would like immediately just get angry. It was weird. I used to have like problems. Mm-hmm. Um, we were going through a really dark time. And certainly, I mean, when you're 16 and you feel like you found your first love, like when you're 16... <laughs> Things are like life or death. You know, the way that you yeah. feel things like you're overly so. you're like it's times two because yeah. like, you don't know anything else other than that. Um, so I got through that. And then, yeah, I was, I was just mad lonely in high school. I never given the respect I had for my father. Like I never got into like drinking drugs. Like all my best friends were like the biggest drug dealers in like the county. So like I would hang out with them maybe. But then as soon as they start, I would leave. So I was very isolated. And I just played like a bunch of video games um and lifted and i was extremely isolated from that and then i had a point where my dad's like girlfriend moved in with her kids and i hated her probably shouldn't say that. i did not like her at all though <laughs> i felt she was just yeah. freeloading. are they still together no she was just freeloading off my dad and i felt even more isolated i just locked myself in my room because then i felt isolated from my dad at that point in my life so mm-hmm. then it was like i had nothing other than video games and going to the gym damn and this um, is right around the same time this was yeah this was like 16 to 18 was so you had nobody was. in your life the guy that other was than, there was like catering to another woman. Yeah. And the woman that you were but catering to. But he was broken. That was a thing. No, I, I know that. I no, no, no. I know him, that. You know? I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, uh, me and my dad are very close. And I hope if my mom listens, she's going to send me some text messages. But like basically, so she cheated on my dad, right? Oh, I I'm sorry. I thought you're, I didn't know your mom was even in the, the picture. Are you yeah. still, are you close with her now? Not really. Again, if she, if she like, I already know she's going to be calling. I don't really talk to her that much and she's just going to get pissed if I even bring it up. But I like being vulnerable. I like how people always ask me like what, what happened in my childhood that made it like that. But I think that's, that's, you know, so that happened. And my dad was distraught, obviously. 
Um, and so he, I see why he like rebounded to like a very low class woman. Um, and he was putting a lot into her. I think it's because he had, he had a void that he had to fill. So I don't blame him for that, but I was pretty messed up during that time too. Cause I felt even isolated from him cause I mm. hated that woman that he brought in. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I didn't find out the reasons for like why the divorce happened until I was like 18. So I like resented my dad for mm -hmm. a minute mm -hmm. cause I didn't know what was happening mm. in the divorce and stuff. Wow. <laughs> that's actually really that's re I love your dad because he didn't tell you your mom did that. Yeah. He wanted you to still look at your mom with respect. Yeah. Yeah. It was a that good, should good show thing. the integrity that your father has. <sighs> yeah. So how was your how was your relationship with your mom now? Like are you are you guys on talking basis? Um, or you guys... every once in a while, but like it's something I definitely need to work on. Um I've lost after learning all the things and, and then dealing with the relationship with me and her afterwards, I just lost a lot of respect. For, mm -hmm. for her for ruining the family because yeah. I don't have one memory of like a good happy family which is like messed up mm -hmm. and when I had like anxiety and depression like really bad I used to like have angry like when I saw families in like at o like Ocean City or something like if I saw families I would get so angry or if I saw my friends having like a happy family I would get so angry like I would just hate it I, I hated it um like so much and then I like I wanted that and I didn't get to experience that and I like mm -hmm. blame my mom for it um so that's like but she's still like I'll talk to her and stuff like that I just like seeing what she did to did to my dad and me being so close to my dad now I don't um I like definitely resent her for it and we talk about that and like she she hates when I wait all when I at all when I mention her and like any of my life story stuff because like she thinks that I'm painting her out to be a bad person and I'm like oh my co-workers are gonna watch this but like the truth of the matter is that she did that and she ruined the family True. <clears throat> which plays a lot of like I think that's why I was so fucked up. Yeah. Like growing up was because I like had that void. Can I ask you something? Yeah. As a friend, would you like me to involve myself in this situation? Because I do have points of views I would like to share with you, but yeah, it's, yeah. it seems to me like it is a very touchy subject with you. No, no, I'm good. Um, I'm just, I just know she's going to get pissed. She's going to be calling my dad up or me <laughs> when she finds out about it. But I don't care. I think the overwhelming that you're feeling is kind of in your control, bro. And I think, I hope you fast and you pray about this, but I think regardless of what your mother did, cheated or not cheated, she's still your mother. Yeah, I know. And, I, I know and how your father in heaven is going to be honoring you is regardless of her sins, that's not your decision on how you treat her. Yeah. So honoring your mom, even when she doesn't feel like she's worth the honoring, is a difference in God's eyes. Yeah, that, I, I like I know that, and I just like hate even thinking about it. So I try to just like it's, ignore it. That's until your I big call me again, and then I like just try to ignore her calls until I can't anymore. And like it's just stuff like I don't know. That that's gonna be your biggest mountain. <laughs> You know, in the in, literally in the Bible verse that we read today, it says, "If you believe, you will tell this mountain to get up and move in front of you." Mm -hmm. That's your big mountain. That's the mountain that you're like, I'm never even gonna try to attempt to climb. Yeah, I don't even entertain it. Um, and I've said this analogy so many times, so I'm gonna speed right through it. But remember, Lazarus was risen from the dead, and when Jesus cried in that moment, it wasn't because that Jesus weeped. Weeped. He weeped because they didn't believe that they could fix something that was irreplaceable. Mm. And so you got to move that stone so something beautiful could come back to life. Yeah. Now, however your mom did or what she did or how she treated the family and, and broke it, regardless, it's his will will be done, right? Mm. So she took sin and broke the home, but God built his rock on you, right? So yeah. look what he's provided. So God's saying, one of your parents failed you, but I haven't failed you. Correct. And I've and I and look at your fruit. So yeah. go and forgive. So that way you could build that family that you got so mad that the devil ripped away from you mm -hmm. that you have the authority. God gave you the ability to yeah. restore and make it and new. I, yeah, but I, you I don't like, want to make it new. Yeah, because I just don't entertain it. I just like I, I always think about not having a situation. Just like think of one day I will have like a family to like relive that through live it through my you kids. Have a family. Yeah, that's the issue. It's like you the thing is, my family. dad doesn't like her at all either, so it doesn't help. Well, they can't be in the he's same. He's angry room. because he, he's looking at his yeah. son and what it's done to his son. Yeah, I don't think he's sitting around waiting for his wife or ex-wife to say, "Hey, I'm sorry that I, I 
had Whoa. monogamy issues. I think it's, I think he would care more of what happened to you, bro. That's yeah. why he didn't tell you what happened to in the situation what, to you're 18. What's crazy is like, he he didn't want me to have to go through a divorce, so he lived with it. Like they lived on separate sides of our house while she was still going out. So he's worried about you, bro. He's yeah. not worried about him. I'm like, it was crazy. I don't know how he did it. He thugged it out. I ain't gonna lie. Think about that. Would you want to live in the same house that another woman laid in bed with him? Nah, I don't know how he, he went crazy. He for did that. it for you. <laughs> so if he could see his son stand above and rise with the will of God and the might yeah. of God to forgive his mother on an occasion that he's made very clear that has burdened his life. Mm -hmm. Now imagine what God's going to do when this whole world sees you forgive a woman. That's yeah. your biggest hurdle. You're now showing people that they could do it too. It's your yeah. actions. It's not your words. No, it's a, it's a good point. I know you're angry I'm happy with your to mom. revisit it. This is what I would say. If you're going to do the fasting situation, mm -hmm. um, I would pray and ask God to forgive you first. Before you get to your mom, forgive you. Forgive those evil thoughts you probably had about your mom. Yeah. Forgive the way you spoke to your mom. The way I treat her now. Yeah. yeah. Ask him to forgive you first. Mm -hmm. And then ask him to invite himself into your heart and help be able to look at this situation from his point of view. Because his yeah. point of view is not your point of view. And right now you want to punish and show as an example to the mm -hmm. world of what your mother did. But I promise you, bro, your mom, regardless of how you feel, loves you. Yeah, and when no. she made this mistake, she didn't think it was going to castrate your life. Mm -hmm. I just feel like she still doesn't genuinely feel sorry about it. That's why, like, mm -hmm. I feel like that's why I haven't. Because, like, she's still, like, there's a lot of issues there, like, mm -hmm. that are, I but probably won't say. The forgiveness like, isn't for her. Yeah. It's for you. I know it's, because it's, it's frustrating, and I think, like, I, you know, it's frustrating having an adult in your life when you feel like they're the adult, and they're the <laughs> ones who should, like be the ones to come to me and maybe apologize and it's frustrating like seeing that like the adult doesn't have the wisdom but she maybe just doesn't have the wisdom that you might have from god to realize you know what i mean yeah. like the situation but trust me from my own experience like i have that only my different way it's it's difficult just feeling like you're the adult in this situation and the adult's not coming to you to have that conversation to hash things out and to talk it through so it's definitely a really difficult thing but as he said <sighs> if he like if you can kind of have that conversation maybe someday even just for yourself and for your, like your future family then i think that yeah it would be something you know yeah i hate when she she'll like call me and be like like tell me that i'm like a like how are you gonna be christian in this and you won't even talk. i hate when she brings that stuff up <laughs> see you and your dad always with your christian stuff but you, you won't even give the time to talk to me anymore so i like i know i gotta work on that but. so check this out that's actually a, a great fair point <laughs> So the devil intervened and used your weaponry against you, right? So she comes mm -hmm. up to you, she goes, "Why would I look at you? You go and preach, but you won't even you won't even forgive me on a mistake and you, and you go out and you and you tear my name down." Mm -hmm. Now hear me out. It takes two to tango. We don't know, I don't know, and I don't know you don't know, but we don't know what was in her heart when she made that decision. Uh, yeah. And I don't think you ever cared to even ask. And I'm not saying what she did was right, bro. No, no, no way near it. In fact, I could agree with you that I know that everything you went through was because of her actions. 100%. Mm -hmm. I'll never take that away from you. Yeah. But what I could take away from you is that crutch that you're leaning on to be like, well, it was her decision, not mine. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is always in your hands. Correct. Now, that is your mom and that is the one that broke you in, in, the, in this point of view. Mm -hmm. But imagine how proud your father in heaven would be and how absolutely wrecked the devil would be when you stand before all three of them your mother god and satan and you say hey i forgive you let's try to build <laughs> tommy this. tommy tommy imagine how it's going to be when you when you say i forgive you mm -hmm. now let's rebuild that home that you broke yeah and then you guys build it. Now, now there's a there's a huge part of you that's like, yeah, right, dude. They can't even talk to each other. I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to look. But there is a possibility, regardless of how you feel, that that family could be whole again. But it all stems from how no you want to attack it. Yeah. And I know you're like, no <laughs> I was way. looking for Joey because like Joey would know like when if they're if my parents in the same room like we just like him or uh, my manager which is uncle would just like they'll mess with my dad and be like oh like saying jokes about my mom like 
you should get back together with Debbie, like Debbie and stuff like that. And they killed him back. Cause like he does not like, he gets so mad. No, I, dude, I guarantee you his pain comes from what he watched his son go through. That's uh, why he lived with that girl for yeah. however long. And I don't think lot. it's for you to fix. It's not for you to fix their relationship together, but, but yours with her, you know what I mean? I disagree no. with you. The Bible doesn't say be peace, uh, uh, keepers. He says, be peace makers. Makers. Yeah. So it is your, if you do pick up that cross, which sometimes hurts, mm -hmm. when you pick up that cross and you're telling these people out there being like, yo, you need to rise above it, you also need to rise above it. Yeah. This is a huge thing. And bro, we just met. I know people in your life that's probably been in your life for your whole life probably would never have the balls to tell you this. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you this because I love you and I want you to succeed in life. And you can't keep having this on your shoulders. You yeah. gotta give it to God. And if you're going to give it to God, you've got to first apologize mm -hmm. and then move Christ-like. What she did, evil. But yeah. you can't put out fire with fire, bro. You can't. Yeah, no, that's it's impossible. True. That's true. I think you'll be a lot more in peace. And I think once you handle that, I think when you are blessed and have your own family, all of these teachings of what you saw your parents go through or the situations you had to rise mm -hmm. above, it's going to make, you said, you pray to God, you go, God, I want a beautiful family. Like, I want it to be beautiful. I want it to be faithful. I want it to be in your light. I want, it, I want them to be eating the fruits from your garden. But that can't happen unless you are planting the way that he wants you, you to reap you know, himself. You know what's crazy is during, after, like, freshly after, like, when I was going through, like, the anxiety, depression stuff, like, I wanted the family more than anything because I thought it would, like, fulfill fulfill it but like i used to like obsess over like wanting to have like a family like get married early like young and then like now i'm like the opposite like i don't care if i get married anymore i like my whole idea of like um it would be cool but like I, i'm not i don't even think about it like i don't obsess over like i used to my my like ideal life is you know you know make as much from the social media stuff i can to where me and my dad can build our, build our dream house on the farm and just buy and sell cars for the rest of my life. You keep saying that, bro, and you're putting, okay, you're <sighs> putting your blessings in your future mm. because you're waiting for a, a, a moment in time where your bank account looks a certain way where you're like, okay, I'm free now. And this yeah. is why in the beginning I say people worship two things, either God or money. Mm. And so right now your actions are showing that you trust more in financing yeah. to set you free than God. But God will give you more opportunity than money could even presently buy. There's a lot of things right now in my life, like my dog. There's no money in the world that you could put, like, hey, sacrifice your dog. That's my, that's my dog. Yeah. That's just a dog, bro. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Money ain't shit. Money is not shit. So when you're waiting around for things to start working out when you have money, I promise you, bro, you will never be blessed financially. You will keep bouncing from check to check or having to buy certain things to keep your career going because God measures your heart and goes, nah, he worships money. He's mm. waiting for money to be more so that way he knows he could go move. And God's saying, go move now. Don't wait yeah, to the yeah. future. Go move now. Go heal your relationships now. Go tell your father, we're going to start doing this now. Tell yeah. it now. Look at it and say it now. So and move in trust. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy we're talking about this. It's just for me, like all it, I'm still like mad young, and the money came big, came like quick. Mm. So I'm like trying to learn all these things at once, like yeah. to where I'm I'm making more than my own father that I looked up to for the longest time, thinking he had all the money in the world, mm -hmm. and then he's like going to be working for me. Yeah, soon. It's, it's crazy. It's in, crazy. In to a see short it. time is like crazy, but like, what do you think about like? Like I have to, I have to put out a lot of money. Like my, I'm trying to like really grow my clothing brand, mm -hmm. both the name the Christian one that we got, yeah. and just so that we can like I, I, I'm first I have fun with it, yeah. Um, but it's I have to put a lot of money out into it, and I almost like am afraid to, um, even though there's no reason not to. It's been doing so good, but I'm like afraid to uh, like heavily invest into that and almost like feel again like feel bad for it. Like I don't know how to explain it to make more money. Yeah. I think it's because, again, you're using that as your lifeline. If I yeah. invest this and I lose it, then I lose everything that I've built. It's not what you built. It's what God's given you. So you have to pray mm -hmm. fast, ask yeah. for wisdom to make sure you're moving correctly. Because mm -hmm. I can tell you all the stuff that's wrong. And I don't want you to abide by me. you got to obey yeah. by him. But if I would to give advice as a, as a brother in Christ, it would be like, don't move with money as the motive. Like think how people say that money yeah. is the motive. That's crazy. If like money that. is your motive, bro, that's your that's, motive. That's you're, the wrong thing. You're driving your way to hell. Yeah. And I don't know you, you're in this industry, bro. Take, start opening your eyes and look at the people that have money, bro. There's some people. I've, yeah. Miserable. I know. You know why? 
because they're waiting for their paradise and it still hasn't came. Mm -hmm. It I've always seen waits, bro. If you had the money that you had now in high school, you'd be like, what is he waiting for? Go. Mm -hmm. But now you see it and it's tangible. You're like, okay, it's not enough. And guess what? You'll get five more million dollars. And now you have five more million dollars of problems that you have to go invest in. And you're like, it's not enough. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> it's always never going to be enough yeah, because the yeah. only thing that's enough is God. Correct. So you got to move that direction. Yeah. I hope that answers. No, 100%. And one, one of the things I want to touch on real quick before we like end it, um, because the, the divorce thing like, like really kind of hurt my relationship with God and made me want to go against it for the longest time. But one of the things that helped me, because like people would ask me like, or I would even say like, why is God punishing me? I say that all the time. I just be like, why? I feel like I'm a good person. I feel like I'm like me and my dad are good Christian people. I'm like, why does God keep making me go through all this like messed up stuff that makes me just like, I'm always depressed, crying, all that. And then it's funny you brought up like the thing with Lazarus and we talked about this in my church is that it literally says in the Bible that Jesus wept, meaning the infinite God of the universe ha came in the, in the form of a man, like felt emotion and wept with us, meaning he experienced every single emotion that I've experienced, meaning that God can ultimately completely relate to me. So like that's what I'm seeing, like going through the divorce and stuff. I wish I had the relationship with God I have now because, or if you're going, if anybody else is going through it, just another like, God like weeps with you and it's not that he's like punishing you or hasn't experienced this himself but, like he he's with you weeping with you and it's like I don't know like that for for some reason clicked with me and made me feel more of an intimate relationship with God knowing that he's experienced every single thing that I've experienced um and he's not just some ultimate power who just makes these things like happen he's there with me in the midst of it mm. so that like helped me kind of get past it you know what I mean reopen my mind up to it um the most powerful thing he gave us is free will so some people use it in a really bad way, man, and it affects other people, but you can't blame God. And a lot of people have that conversation with me. They're like, well, if God exists, then why is there homeless people? Why is there people dying? Why is there children being raped? It's because of free will. It's because of free will. I, always, I, do, I say the same thing. Bring it back to free will. Always. It's tough. Mm -hmm. What you put your focus on, what you speak every day, you know what I mean? What you like look at. And, and I think that's why, too, I had brought up initially, like, you know, if you really, when you were feeling the anxiety and depression, if you really, like, spoke out negativity, I brought that up because it's, like, just back to the point of what you shift your focus to and what you um, fill your life with. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm glad we had this conversation. It was fire. I liked it. I needed it. I'm not going to lie. It's I, cool to be with somebody more spiritually mature than me for the first time. Trial and error, man. Trial yeah. and error. It's literally just how many times you could get up and you move forward, you start realizing when you look back, you're like, man, I dealt with a lot. And then you yeah. could be like, I could keep going. Like it, it hasn't stopped me yet. And I mm -hmm. think every Christian's biggest fear is how am I going to keep going in any vertical, financially, physically, mentally, spiritually. If you're planning on moving forward, do it with God. Mm. And then the peace will come. Because I tell people all the time, I'm like, bro, you could be in the bottom of a ditch. If you have God's peace, you're in a good place. You're in a very good place spiritually. And it's crazy to think that we, we see it every day, but we don't understand it. We see that guy that has billions of dollars, but he has a mansion and he has nobody in it. Because yeah. he pushed everybody out of his life to get what he needed. You know, my, my manager said something on, uh, on like our first original pod when I used to have like other people on it. I forgot what he said. He said it, it's not the, it's it's not the house that matters. It's the people that are in the house that matters. So it was like a good thing he said it's that like made me think. Yeah, it's like the people that you, kind of develop those like intimate relationships, that like really like, thought with me. Like he said that, like how he'd rather have, the smallest house with the his family like his daughters and his wife and stuff than to have the, biggest. It's just going back to again like money not being everything and everybody chasing money and even myself I find myself doing that. Not even like. Just to me, like money's always just gave me, give me the idea of like uh, financial freedom, like not having to struggle for. Yeah. It's a tool, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. a tool. It's you should still look at it as a tool. And by the way, it's still a big blessing, bro. Like there's going to be people that watch this podcast and be like, you don't know shit, bro. You were never broke. And it's like, yeah, bro, you don't know my my parents came to this country with nothing. They had to build mm -hmm. everything from the ground up. If they had that mentality is like, oh, it's not going to happen then they were not going to get it, but they had faith and they built upon it. And then when they built upon it, they gave it to me and they said, Hey, like they didn't give me money, bro. Mm -hmm. When people like, I always say on the podcast, I was like, I'm not scared. Cause my, I can always go back home and I have money. 
And people think that I'm sitting on, my parents are sitting on millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. But they're, they, they put those words in my mouth. I just say that they're rich enough to, to provide a home where I could live with them and I'll mm. be happy. If you give me a family that loves me and food on my table, I promise you everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Here, here's one thing that I always tell people. If you think you're going through it, write down on a piece of paper all of the blessings that you have in life mm -hmm. and then pretend that God would only give you like four of them. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. But then you realize what are the four or five he's gonna, you're going to ask. Immediately you're going to ask for health. You came in with that. Mm -hmm. You're going to family. You have that. So it's like all the things that you were born with is what you need the most. Yeah. But we don't care about them until yeah. they're almost gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when you're sick, all you want to be is feel better. Yeah. But you don't appreciate like a normal day you wake up and you're like just not sick. I, yeah. I've like, I always try to think about stuff like that. Or mm -hmm. like, bro, I'll go through TikTok and I'll see some like, like I saw like these conjoined twins who had to live life. And I saw that. And I'm like, Dan, I re and I really still complain about yeah stuff and i'm like it, <laughs> yeah it, it makes it, you feel just gratitude mm -hmm. anxiety and gratitude can't exist in the brain at the same time i like i like saw this study on that that used to help me get over anxiety as well is gratitude and anxiety it's like at those two emotions cannot exist the more gratitude you have the less stress you will always be yep mm -hmm. amen yeah. i always make jokes <sighs> about listening in on god's prayers and we have some guy in a different country is like god if if my children just have one meal tomorrow to eat i'll be happy and then this guy's like, I wish my Wi-Fi was faster. And he's like, who's he going to listen to? And yeah. the sad truth is he's listening to both. Yeah. It's, it's all about in the, t and it, it boggles my mind. But like, if you take that guy from this country and you put him in that man's life, that man will no longer ever have problems ever in his life. Mm -hmm. The power went out. We don't have Wi-Fi. That's fine. The fridge is still has food in it. Yeah. His mindset is completely different is because his, his gratitude is different. Yep. So technically when people go, why do bad things happen? It's like, because bad things only happen because humans only want to involve God when bad things happen. Mm -hmm. If good things are always happening, why would you ever involve God? You wouldn't even know he existed. You wouldn't even care. But immediately yeah. all of my friends, every single one of them, only time they talk to them is in the shower. He's like, please God, please God, don't let her be pregnant. Please God, don't yeah. let me get an STD. Please God, this and that. And it's just like, bro, he, he's not the 911 call. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Imagine me and you having a relationship and I only hit you up when I need something from yeah, you. Yeah, that's the worst. You're that's not going to answer my call at one point. You're going to be like, bro, like, I, it's a burden at this point. Yeah. No, that's, a, that's a good point. Whenever I like reach something in success, I always like point it straight to God. I, I was live when I hit 1 million on YouTube just literally the night before I flew out here and I like immediately went to Bible verses on the stream, like talking about like, because I always want to make sure people like see that I know none of this is by my doing, but by God's. And I'm trying to like. That's so funny you said that. Make that you literally just said that, right? You said, I want to make sure that people know that this is because of God and not the. Not the what? What were you saying? Not me. Not you. Yeah. So it's not you. It's not money. Yeah. So if you want to really show God <laughs> in your heart and yeah, show the yeah. world that it's not you, I you got to start moving as if it's not your finances yeah, but it's i still power i still like work though right 100 okay that's what i'm saying i feel there's like people no will try to like yeah no nah, no nah, you have to work that's why yeah. the people moved the rock he didn't mm -hmm. move the rock i always circle back to that because i was like listen if a guy's gonna bring somebody back to the dead i think the coolest way of doing it is like yeah watch this and then move the rock and throw it he could have easily done that and everybody was like oh my god look at this guy he's moving a boulder but he did it he said you move it it's not my job Mm -hmm. My job is to be here when you need me. Let me give you an example. I said this to somebody the other day. I go, God is a gentleman. He knocks at your door. He knocks, right? He goes, hey, Alex, I want to come in. I know your house is under fire right now. I want to come in. Mm -hmm. And now you're hearing the knocks. If the knocks could be somebody giving you a Bible verse, it could be somebody uh, uh, being in there in a time of need. But what the worst part about God knocking and you not answering the door is that he could hear Satan crawling through your window. Mm. Satan's not going to knock at your door and wait for you to invite him in. Mm. He's a burglar. He's going to come inside of your house and make it dysfunctional. Mm. And how sad is it that all of this could be evacuated and cleaned out if you just opened the door? Yeah. And I know you want to show that to the world, but it's so funny, dude, because like 
I literally, I do this all the time. I go, do this. And then as soon as I sign off, I'm like, man, I really got to start doing that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. And you know what I tell people that is? It's the Holy yeah. Spirit, right? So yeah. the Holy Spirit in you is guiding humans, but it's also yeah. guiding you. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many times I watch back my podcast when I'm giving somebody advice and yeah. it's like a month later and what I'm reciting is what God's slapping that's me in my face. That's why I do mine. Dude, it's it, like, it, it, that's yeah. beautiful though. That should yeah. show you that it's not us. It's 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 a spirit that's in us. But it's so funny how our spirit could be guided us this way and a lot mm-hmm. of people say this is a common saying it's it's better to preach it than to do it it's easier to preach it than e- do it be- uh, easier said than done. easier said than yeah. done right it's a common thing but we all know mm-hmm. we all know mm-hmm. also you know the gut feeling do you know that came from the bible really yeah in the bible it explains that it, it, it's from the, it's an area of the gut and so people literally changed that verbiage because people were like it, it's my holy spirit but they didn't want that to be the vertical because people are like, well, I'm not spiritual. Yeah. So now they say it's gut. The only thing my gut does is not break down gluten. Mm. <laughs> and yet we're putting all of this weight on a gut. Yeah. My gut can't take gluten. You think it's going to take my problems? It can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just funny to see this. I don't know. But dude, I, I really, really love this podcast. This is yeah. the longest podcast I think I've ever done in my life. Um, and rightfully so, bro. This is amazing. Hey, I yeah, appreciate you. Comment down Thank that you, you made it all the way to the end. Um, and then also, I think the one thing I want to wrap up with is you're not alone. In my heart, I, I feel like I need to say this. You're not alone. So if anybody feels like they're alone right now, you're not alone. He felt alone, and now he has millions of people on his side. Mm-hmm. It could turn overnight. Where you're at in your life, there's maybe a lesson that you need to learn. So humble yourself, invite God in, and grow from it. You might feel like you're being buried alive, but you're just being planted. And you're about to grow beautifully. I love you guys. Be safe. Like and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.